In the sky, it's a bird, it's a plane Flying high, I emerge through the flames Have no fear, I'm here, so stand back Melanin, activate the name of Super Black In the sky, it's a bird, it's a plane Flying high, I emerge through the flames Have no fear, I'm here, so stand back Melanin, activate the name of Super Black uh, Imagine that, a future that's super black Long as your skin brown, your superpowers intact what would your powers be? Just hope it ain't super whack. Spatial manipulation, create a portal that's black. Maybe just super speed, time travel to run it back. Or cheat manipulation to keep my spirit intact. As I encounter evils the world face, demons the world makes. I needed the world to stay. Rest in peace to Chad, what they killed all the Black Panthers. Told us white lies, I still marvel at black answers. Suits in DC, pray it lead to a civil war. It ain't no Justice League. What's the need to be civil for? Propel like the juggernaut, it's clear, ain't no stopping. This. The world in grave danger, who can stop the apocalypse? They killed all the heroes, the new ones don't really care But if you need me, put your fist up in the air Yeah, In the sky, it's a bird, it's a plane Flying high, I emerge through the flames Have no fear, I'm here, so stand back Melanin, activate the name, is super black In the sky, it's a bird, it's a plane 
Flying high, I emerge through the flames. Have no fear, I'm here, so stand back. Melanin activate the name is super black. Hey everybody, we are back. It's Tuesday. Thank you for tuning in. It's Blurred's Eye View. It's your man on the wall, Chris Fury. Let me get myself adjusted here. Uh, for those of us listening, I'm talking about the microphone, you dirty-minded bees. Uh, anyway, <laughs> thank you for tuning in. If you're watching this live on YouTube, remember to hit that subscribe button and hit that notification bell. You get to see all these great episodes and more from, uh, from the crew that can only do it as we do. Also, you can check us out on Always Press Record on Roku and Amazon Fire te Television. Uh, you can listen to us wherever you listen to podcasts, including Opulence Radio. Uh, you can check us out every Thursday and I believe every Monday as well. Uh, listening to past episodes and great stuff that's been going on. But let's get this party started. Let's bring in the team. Let's get her in here. Always ladies first. Lady Mandalore. Hello. How's it going? Good evening. It's going smoother than it has been. Uh, <laughs> this is one of them things. Yeah. It is. It is. I'll take it. I'll take a win. A win's a win. A win. Yeah. A win's a win. Um, <laughs> that's that's the kind of going rate at this point. Is a win's yeah. a win. Uh, back off sabbatical for a little bit. He's he's Ooh. well. He's rested. Do we? He's oh. got himself together. The cinematic assassins in the building. The king is here. <laughs> The king is here. How you the feeling, king? brother? How you feeling? <laughs> hey, listen. Kill Boxoon on Netflix. Oh, Watch it. yes. Watch it. I've been hearing about it. Watch it's it. On my it's on my list. Listen, uh, listen. It's on my list. John, John, John Wick 4? Oh. It, it's, oh. It's, 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 it's up in there. It's, it's, it's oh. up in their business. Oh. <laughs> it's up in yeah, their business. Seen, I've, seen a couple, I've seen a couple clips. Of this one, and yeah, it's it's a beast. Hmm. It's a beast. I so tell y'all, yeah. the the kill box is is what it's called. Kill box soon. Kill box soon. Yeah. Oh, Korean flick. I'm assuming. Yes. Okay. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> uh, like, kill box soon. No, yeah. I don't. <laughs> It's Kill a little the box soon. Yes, yeah. that's same that's premise. A, that's, that's a completely different kind of movie. Yeah, that's a, different, <laughs> that's a whole a different thing. Uh, we got Black Spartan in the building. What's hey! going on? Every single time. We get him every single time. Metal <laughs> Steel. Metal welcome Steel. back. Welcome <laughs> back. Welcome back. Welcome back. What's that's going on, that's what's happening. <laughs> Loving the Black Spartan, what I've been Black Spartan yeah. killed the box soon. That's why we got little Obi. <laughs> <laughs> and it has begun. <laughs> that's a counter moment. That, that that's a counter right. moment. That's yeah, counter. Yeah. That's a okay. counter. There it is. <laughs> Clip done. I thought. I thought. You know. Maybe you need another week, Will. <laughs> <laughs> that timeout. That timeout wasn't long enough. He came out with a hot fire. He's like, I got rounds. Yeah. <laughs> been waiting. Been waiting. It's been, it's, been, it's, been, it's been sitting there waiting in the chambers. We have a special guest with us tonight, uh, owner of Colin Up Productions, Obi Chuku. Here he is coming into the building. What's going on? Hey. How's I going? To, I told him before the show that banner is life. Uh, yeah, it's, it's dude, I want me, one. It's, it's giving me Saturday morning cartoon vibes. Uh, I need that in my life. So, <laughs> he's going to be talking to us about his production company, all the great projects that he has lined up, and so much more. Uh, but how was everybody's week? <laughs> week <laughs> in. Eventful. In well, Black Spartan, way? Black Spartan had to bump it up and buy two pallets of diapers. Uh, <laughs> so, good lord! No, it's I feel, I feel sorry for her. That that breastfeeding ain't no joke, especially when appetite increases. Mm. Ooh. Oh, little Obi will be in the gym with you in no time. Yeah, mm. at this point. <laughs> good lord! Ouch! If you guys are wondering why Black Spartan is our ship's mechanic. Uh, if you check out his videos, he's just been deadlifting everything. So, I ship swear. engines and it's all fake weights. It's all fake. <laughs> they it's don't all know. Fake. <laughs> sure, sure. Uh, your boy has been celebrating birthday month, so I'm, I'm still celebrating. So, 
Shout out, shout out to Candy <laughs> B. Well, uh, <laughs> I'm gonna tell you, like I told them, uh, I had a friend of mine say, "Old man," I said, "Old." I said, "Nick Fury's old. He has the Infinity uh, Serum in his blood. I have melanin. We are not <laughs> the same. <laughs> we are not the same." <laughs> so, uh, but yeah, it's, it's I've been enjoying life. Uh, here in Cleveland, uh, strangely enough, normally it rains on my birthday a lot. Mm-hmm. It didn't this time on Friday. It didn't. It was it was seventy. It was like eighty degrees, mm. and then it was well, eighty degrees on Saturday. And I'm you know me and the wife went out and did our thing, took around the town, and uh, wouldn't you know it? Turned around Sunday, temperature drop. Oh yeah. Then Monday. <laughs> Drop some more. Mm-hmm. Come Tuesday, going back to work. Say, oh yeah, you know it's going to be thirty-seven degrees, <laughs> maybe fifty at, at the mm-hmm. high. I'm like, yeah, I'm like, yeah. Well, Lord, you waited till after the birthday, so thank you very much. It's greatly appreciated. I'm not mad. <laughs> it's, it's, not it's, mad. it's summer weather or something else. I'm a winter person. <laughs> Ill. <laughs> exactly. Ill. That, that that exactly. Uh, so without further ado, uh, we got some, we got some news. Uh, <laughs> I didn't want to do that part of it, mm. but mm. rip it off. Just rip here, off the bandaid. It's like a bandaid. Here we go. Wait, 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 wait. Just want to say, not being on social and stuff, this is like the scariest part of my week because I, I <laughs> don't know what's about to go down. Well, it's... You're, we're picking up pretty much where you left. So, yeah, so... <laughs> yeah. We're, we're, we're Dragon Ball Z. you remember. So, yeah, we're, we're hitting yeah. them all, 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 all over. Well, this is like a Dragon Ball Z episode. We're still in the middle of yelling. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hmm. Next time on Dragon Ball Z, you know it's one of those type of things. You're still in that stage. Ah, mm-hmm. uh, okay. Here we go. Like a band Here we go. <laughs> here we go. Jonathan Majors uh, oh, has damn. just been drop, dropped, or his management team has just dropped him. Uh, he's also Ooh. been dropped from several projects, including. Including the man in my basement, which is a high-profile ad campaign for the Texas, uh, I, he's been dropped from a Walter mm-hmm. Mosley novel, The Man in My Basement. Also, a high-profile ad campaign for the Texas Rangers, and a Fifth Ooh. Estate Otis Redding biopic. He's also oh, been dropped from this. No, yeah, no. there has not been any word or discussions as far as uh, Disney dropping him yet. Uh, there's oh, no been, oh. been no words yet. Uh, I hope that whatever this evidence they have, they need to hurry up and produce this stuff. But and we don't want another Johnny Depp. This right. is what we're saying. Mm-mm. We don't want another, and I th- and I don't think Disney wants that neither. They made Mm-mm. that mistake before. Yeah, and it just it's it don't look list. He still he still he still set he still the set to star in the understudy on Amazon that's directed by Spike Lee. So. You know, and then also uh, in the play Dennis Rodman in uh, 48 Hours in Vegas. If that is not, you should just pull out while you, I mean, Jesus. I mean, I mean it's, nah, he's, Dennis, he's, Dennis he's, ain't the problem. Dennis, Dennis, Dennis ain't, ain't the problem. No, this, is about to be problem. Petty. this is about to be petty. Could this be considered as prep? Stop. Go to bed. Go to bed now. Go to bed. <laughs> It Go to bed. Be. <laughs> Both of y'all. <laughs> I'm trying. I'm just that's no. the first thing that came to my head. I'm like, wait a minute. No. I said, wait a minute. Is this he method? Is it you saying he's method acting? Is that what you're trying is to say? He already <laughs> <doing that>? <laughs> <laughs> is that what you're trying to say? I mean, a, I mean, he is a method wow. actor. I'm just throwing that out there. Yeah. I mean, I I don't I don't. I'm not, I, I'm not allowed to talk about this, so go I, I don't want to see. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think it's like a Kobe moment, honestly. 
Yeah. I feel like a lot mm-hmm. of folks remember when Kobe went through that situation. Mm-hmm. No, everyone, <laughs> no, I <laughs> do not, not know. Try not I do to, not. Try not to remember. <laughs> oh yeah, I mean, I remember because I, I Dave Chappelle was something. When I heard this, I, I thought of Dave Chappelle, that joke where he's like, mm-hmm. he's, I remember what, being young watching him. Kobe would be in the courtroom and then in the basketball court. And there was that one time <laughs> Dave Chappelle makes a joke about how <laughs> he played like he shot played like 81 <laughs> to prove he's innocent or something like that. It was just, like the thing was that what I'm saying is that um this is bad. It's definitely bad. Um same way it was with a lot of um um these big um a class high level um celebrities or whatever. Like at the end of the day, I think hopefully he can still you know, perform his craft. Cause like, again, there's a lot of these kind of major folks that of African descent that rise. And it's just always that one thing. Like, I mean, you, you keep going, like it's either that something going on with um, spouse is either running around. I think Martin Lawrence, you got Alan Iverson. You just keep going down the list and you wonder like if one of those movies, like when they're just checking off boxes of costing mm-hmm. out different people, that are have such an influence in the community if that's really happening like you gotta wonder you know what yeah. i mean um mm. so like i mean look at look at martin luther king didn't they yeah, hit him with that yeah it's a character yeah, 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 yeah. assassination you gotta it, may, right. it does make you wonder it really does make you wonder like what are they because his rise was 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 there he was yeah. he was, it was he was getting ooh. he was in fantastic grows he's actually a really great actor and mm. You know, we were just like, yo, he's 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 it like he's he's part of this next group of young black actors that's like out here tearing it up and and, yeah. and philosophical with the cup because the cup was the if that cup he wasn't carrying around wasn't a was a conversation starter. Right. That damn cup, that damn cup. And I and I said, I'm like, no, he didn't. And I'm like, when he said it, I'm like, OK, and now is now you're seeing, you know, the text messages didn't really help his cause. Absolutely did not help. Have you ever seen somebody look with those text messages? Were basically her with her eyes in the camera reading a script in front of the. In front of <laughs> That's, what it, That's okay. exactly what it was. That's exactly what it was. Wait, what happened? It was an OJ. Yeah. It was OJ. So, it was. When, so, so originally, when <laughs> the first part of the proving his innocence was coming out, mm-hmm. uh, the woman that was supposedly assaulted, which is apparently his girlfriend, uh was saying that I'm so upset that they arrested you. I told them not to. I told them this wasn't your fault. Blah, blah, blah. And it really came off like... That look. That, yeah. that, that's the, that is the look. Yep. It really came off. Like, if you know anything about abusive relationships and seeing those signs and, and how those... That's how that came off. And it was just like, oh, God, no, that's not the proof we needed. We didn't need I was, that. I was, I was expecting proof like I'm walking out, I'm not touching you. Yeah. I'm walking out. I'm I not still don't you. see where's this videotape of, of the cat of the cab situation. That's where we're still waiting. Haven't on. Seen that. We're waiting uh, on that. We're, we, well, let's, we're let's waiting kinda, on let's be honest. If the cab video is like text message video, the mouse is gonna be making calls. Let's just be yeah. honest. Mm. I mean, they are now although they haven't parted ways with him. They said oh. they just in case they have a backup. Mm. They're looking for a da- they're looking for a Damson Idris I gotta, kind type of, of actor, and I was like, no, "Oh, you're no. looking for do you, really no. want, do you really want Snowfall as King? Jesus. No, the Black Skin no. Coalition. That is it. That's <laughs> not it. Dynasty? We do not <laughs> all look and act the same. It what don't can... match. No, wait, wait. No. wait if, I, if, if we get him from Snowfall, that's the King I want. Who built no. this uh, <laughs> brick? Boy, stop. He what is his, what, he, what did he say? You. What does he say? He says, then shut up and let me get you out of this. I like, got I need to do everything <laughs> else. <laughs> let me get uh, I can see that. Just just give me a king, give me a king variant like that. There you go. So I it's uh bring back Terrence Howard. <laughs> <laughs> He's talking about retirement. Uh, I'm like, I I killed you. It is basically the same issue. Yeah. Him, him, yeah. He, anyway, he had a he had an issue too. He did. He yeah. had an issue too. Um, I mean, mostly the men. I think, I think the men. Chancel just, Terrence Howard. Yeah. I think, <laughs> I think of all. I think mostly men. Men of African descent really. I guess are easy picking, or we just ain't figured it out because a lot of the women of African descent actors, celebrities, for the most part, clean slate. 
know how to keep the act together. Yeah. I, I don't know. That's just a. I I, uh, I feel like on. I, listen, look, I'm I'm <laughs> I'm very much. I'm team us all day, every day, any day. Yeah. This is a people thing. This is this particular thing. When it comes down to the violence and staying clean and all that other kind of stuff, that is a that is a person to person scenario. Mm -hmm. The judgment and the repercussions, yes, that is a race issue. But yeah. I'm not gonna sit here and act like white people. people mm, mm, sorry, white people. This is why, this white is people don't be acting the goddamn up the way that we do too. This, we this we everybody we does this is why we have a rule. We have a rule when you come up. Do not mess with the church's money. That's mm. it. If something's going to mess with the church's money, it's not for you. And, and, sometimes, you some, and sometimes you got to change where you're at or who mm -hmm. you're with. When you, and it ain't being brand new, but you got to understand something. Not everybody can go. Not everybody can go. be on the boat. So Shout out to Russell Wilson. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> there it is. <laughs> there it is. <laughs> Say what you want, but he came up. He came up. <laughs> he chose hey. right. <laughs> he said, you know what? Let me. My man's lineup and everything been right ever since. Uh, <laughs> uh, they haven't been asked in other news. They haven't been asked. But now that they have expressed interest in doing this. Mm -hmm. The Russo brothers wants to uh, wants to direct Batman: Brave and the Bold. Batman and Did Robin. They say Brave specifically. And they they want to do it. They said it themselves. Mm -hmm. They want to do it. Mm -hmm. And let them do it. I say they have a good track record. I've watched just about everything they've done, mm -hmm. uh, and I I have been impressed. Like from Yo. the Gray Man, uh, Captain America: Winter Soldier, the Extraction. Yeah, the Extraction. Which mm -hmm. the extraction two is coming out, you know. So mm -hmm. they have a, you know, they have a track record, mm -hmm. and it's good. Like they, they like they have a storyline going on. So they did say, expect Marvel yeah. fucked up big mm -hmm. time. That was a go. really great movie. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 So <laughs> you know, Avengers: Infinity War and and Endgame. I'm like, let them have it. James, James Gunn is at DC. Like, come friends. Yes, that's all he is. I'm like, you know what? I'm not saying I've seen you in a lot. So let's come on. I'm not saying y'all got to leave, but the door is open. James Gunn is, <laughs> James Gunn is treating DC Studios like the open invitation to Baptist Church. Come, friends. It's just you're all, you're all welcome here. What, what, just, what movie would you prefer? It's it's a, it's a vibe. It's a whole mm -hmm. vibe, and I'm for it. I I don't see them turning it down. Like right. you know. Mm -hmm. He's saying they're saying so. Basically, they say obviously James Gunn's over there running it. Uh, it will be a no brainer, says Joe Russo. We love him to death. We love the direction he's taking that world in. You know he's going to be inventive with it. And favorite DC characters, they said they've always felt, you know, a certain way. They are not about to sit up there and tell that lie. Don't you tell me that goddamn lie. They wasn't talking about none of this DC mm -hmm. mess when James wasn't there. Well, don't no, cap. they no, can't. Don't cap. They're, don't they're that. under the mouse. They can't say that. You know. <laughs> heard them say it not one word before they started doing these Marvel movies. You know how they do over there Cash in Marvel. Mickey Mouse yeah, 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 you know how they do it. There's, there's NDAs that go on over there. Right. You know, yeah. I'm no, no, I'm talking before. Before oh. you even signed up I with them. I never heard of these fools talk about no Marvel movies. Well, DC, DC really didn't have the kind of hope that we kind of have right now. That's true. <laughs> That's fine, but don't yeah. act like you've been you know, hiding away. DC had depression. We got hope for once. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we do. One time. Y'all better enjoy it while it lasts. We, we, we let, do. Let, us, let, us, let, us, let us whisper. Let us whisper. Let us, hope. Let us reboot Batman again. I, oh my God. Oh, y'all. Y'all going to let that man let that man do a good Superman movie for y'all. Just he, one he, time, please. So, so yeah. speaking of which, <laughs> speaking, of which speaking of which, speaking of which, He's already working on the script. No. Uh, <laughs> James Gunn's already working on the script, mm -hmm. uh, costume designs, and so much more. I'm ecstatic. I'm not going to lie. I like James Gunn work. Mm -hmm. uh, he hasn't let us down when it comes to the obscure and different. Uh, I can still, I literally can still sit down and watch The Suicide Squad with no problem. Do you think we're going to get Mitsuplitsik? Yes. Ooh. I was about to say, you can't say that word Ooh. on here. Why not? 
I didn't know what you was about to say. I heard this. this I was like, whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> it's a family Manny, show, Manny, ma'am. Well, Manny Patty. going to be a go word? No. <laughs> That's the go safe, word. safe word is pineapple juice. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> that I can, yo, if anybody can pull something like that off, mm-hmm. it would be him. Yeah. Mm-hmm. They've tried it before on Smallville. No, no. Ah, uh, yeah. <laughs> Too much CW drama. Yeah, they they really they tried mental mental mm-hmm. plastic with on Smallville and Doomsday on Smallville, and it just mm-mm. didn't work. But it's too small. Somebody it was, saved it was, me with more than just a theme song. That was the whole was, point of the show. That was that was I was like, damn, you know, like y'all y'all were there, y'all y'all had it, and you dropped it. Uh well, <laughs> so I mean, literally, literally did the booster goal. Yeah. <laughs> well, we, I'm, sw- I'm, I'm, I'm rooting for two people for, for Booster Gold. There's only two people I can really see right now. Well, then, damn, now three. Mm-hmm. Okay. Jonathan Majors? No. No, oh, Jesus. <laughs> Why not? <laughs> I'm still rooting for him. Uh, I'm still <laughs> that was the, the resurrection <laughs> role of a lifetime. I was gonna say if they after and, and like you said, Black Spartan, if they ever do like because they have Blue Beetle coming out. So mm-hmm. if they ever do like a Blue Beetle Booster Gold team up, mm-hmm. would he have to be well Blue Beetle's younger? He's a teenager, he's 20. Yeah, he's, well, the way they got the way they got him pegged now, he's kind of in that post graduation because they're trying to go with the graduation day comic line. So right. you kind of put him post high school. So who would be? I can, how old is Booster Gold? Booster Gold. See, that's mm. the thing. The Ted Cord and Booster Gold, they were around the same age, right? Mm. But they're not using Ted Cord for Booster Gold. They're using a much younger person. Mm-hmm. So now I'm looking at it like, I this is. I think you can get away with it, and I'm gonna tell you why. You can get away with it if it's Nathan Fillion. Mm-hmm. You can get away with it if it's Chris Pratt, and you can get away with it if it's Ryan Reynolds, and this is why. Because here, those are three people who they would make, like, really bad decisions, Mm -hmm. and you would expect them to make better decisions because they're quote-unquote older, Yeah, and it's the teenager who's had to steer them the other way. Mm -hmm. But I see, I mean, if we're being honest, I'd rather just have Nathan Fillion. That's just me. Yeah. What What do you think? What are you going to say, lady? Woody uh, Woody Harrelson. Oh, four. <laughs> Woody Harrelson. I can yeah. see that. I can mm-hmm. see that. Mm-hmm. Hey, so listen. a little bit of Cheers and a little bit of um 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 the serial um natural born serial killers. Oh my god! Mix, natural, mix that. Natural born killers. Natural, natural born, born killers. Killer, sorry. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. I'm still ten toes down for Jake or Logan Paul. I forget which one is which, but you know, the one that does the wrestling. No. Oh dear God, Logan. Go is it Logan? No. Yeah, Logan. No. Logan. He's not I even acting. He just be himself. I just want Here, to- here's the thing. I as he much as as time. much as I really don't like, is it Logan or Jake? I can't remember. Either exactly. one. Either, either one. Either one. Either one. Can be punched in one. The face. Go ahead. <laughs> right. I'm not going to take away from his athleticism. He he is performing on that <laughs> level. Mm, yeah. He's performing on that I, level. Yeah, I agree. I agree. Yeah. But I don't know. Uh, yeah, I agree. He. I mean, the fact I mean, he's, he's getting he's millions of dollars. And yeah. <laughs> and he's, 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 he's 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 boxing. He's wrestling. His boxing is weak. His yeah, his boxing is, is definitely his weak. wrestling. A high school wrestler. Super can him. His Both rest. Them. I can see his wrestling with the right, with the right storyline being much better. Stop giving that boy a job, please. <laughs> no, he just needs to pick one. <laughs> no, I, I don't want none. I, anyway, I'm going to let y'all live. I mean, it, you know, it, it, I said the athleticism because what I seen him do in the WWE. You know? Yeah, definitely. I saw you know. that, too. It was quite... It was, it's it impressive. I, I was yeah, impressed. Was I was like, okay, I wasn't expecting you to do that. Okay, you know, yeah. swan time bomb. But, but I love martial arts, and I just feel like when I see him, sometimes I'm just like... <sighs> <laughs> But don't expect us to take you serious. I'm just what is what I'm saying. <laughs> so it's just one of those things. Uh I could 
Yeah. <laughs> Lady Mandalore threw me off with the with Woody Harrelson, and I'm like, <laughs> I, I can't unsee it. Like a oh, like he's like an older Booster Gold, and he was just like, I need to fix this. It, it, like, <laughs> what, if, what, if Booster, what if Booster Gold? What if Booster Gold is Woody Harrelson popped up at a Cheers bar and said, "This feels familiar." <laughs> oh God! Oh, or just on the set alone, <laughs> this, this pops up on the good. set. <laughs> Oh my oh, god. Man. All right, so that's the petition. James Gunn, whatever you're looking, we got four, we got four and running. Uh <laughs> at this point, it's just kind of like who's the favorite? It seems you know, who's the favorite. So <laughs> Fillion will probably win that role. Uh, because yeah. because Ryan might be busy with Deadpool. <laughs> yeah, so yeah. Deadpool's about to be in multiple multiple Marvel movies just yeah. to do his cameos. I can just hear him like, what the shit? Uh <laughs> <laughs> You're probably asking yourself, why am I in why am I in Fantastic Four? <laughs> <laughs> With the music playing in the background. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, so I know people that have listened to the past episodes uh, have heard there's a particular fam- infamous episode where it was me, Candy B, in DC, where we went on a 25 minute row session on Cyclops. <laughs> now. Don't get me wrong. I don't dislike Cyclops. I don't. Uh, they just they nerf him in the cartoon. They just mm-hmm. they nerf him. If you read him in the comics, however, he's not the Boy Scout. He's lo- he's not as lovelorn as you think. Uh, it's just he that's his we- he, right. he, he, he he's all, he's all he's all about you getting these hands. He's mm-hmm. he's team he, he's he's rated E for everybody. He's like you get these hands. <laughs> uh, if you have not read. Issue 21 of X-Men. Oh, I he was completely that. justified. That's all I'm gonna say. This this man set up there, like even Gene, Gene, he was on a tear, and Gene said, No, Scott, you need to look at me with your eyes. <laughs> and, <she's> like, <laughs> and she I, held his power back, and she 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 didn't even she couldn't even she barely talked him down. Mm-hmm. He was just like, for now, we're gonna table it for now, but I guarantee you. He wasn't wrong. <laughs> he, was, he, he wasn't was wrong that assumption. He was. Uh, he is making moves. Mm-hmm. He is saying things. I'm just like, where was this dude in the '97 X? Ex- <laughs> Talk function. Trying to be trying to be reasonable. That's where Talk he was. Yeah, Wolverine and the Broodmare and in the Brood and the Broodmaster. It's like he's like wipe him mm-hmm. out. <laughs> he's like, mm-hmm. I don't want him. Get rid of him. Don't need him. Just, just love the fact. But what we should say to them? Why? Yeah. <laughs> just, right. just they why? They should have been gone. That's his, 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 we should have gotten rid of them a long time ago. That's his thing. I, I, I like what it, I will say. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. I uh, I like where they. I like how they're playing the X Men right now. Uh, I oh god, I love how they're playing the X Men right now. I really do. <laughs> I do. I do. If you oh I don't did I have the picture? If you're reading Storm and the Brotherhood of uh of Mutants, yeah. Oh my god. Oh my god. <laughs> she is her namesake. Thank God she is her namesake. Here it is. If you are reading there was this issue three, yeah, issue three mm-hmm. of Storm and the Brotherhood of uh Mutants. Goddess doesn't even fit her mold anymore. My queen. <laughs> my, queen, my queen, my queen, my queen. They an have undying managed, entity. Uh, they have with uh, un, un, literally <laughs> undying entity. <laughs> like my girl lived several hundred years. The literal definition of pull up. <laughs> <laughs> That's about the best way I can sum up that issue. The literal definition of pull up. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> As a matter of you fact, smoke, but prior prior to this mm-hmm. run that she's doing right now, when she was running Kakroa, uh, when she goes against Cyclops' brother Vulcan, mm-hmm. I can guarantee you because she's whooped Cyclops' ass before in hand to hand combat. <laughs> I'm pretty oh, I'm I'm oh, pretty God. sure Cyclops has said, you know what, you know what, you need this ass whooping because you you just talking too much. I'm sorry, Aurora. Go ahead, do what you got to do. Go into the bar, set him down because he I'm you know he ain't listening. Havoc is like, yeah, when I'm the voice of reason, mm-hmm. you need to listen. <laughs> that that can be seen as a disrespectful. That was probably, yeah, that was a disrespectful ass whooping. 
Oh yeah, it was. <laughs> She, she was well, like, he was being me, disrespectful. He was being uh, disrespectful. So there's, she, she there's, a kind. There, there's whoopings and there's there's ass whoopings and there's disrespectful because that was a that was a morally intelligent way of destroying someone to the soul core to the point where it's like, yeah, I'm I good. Bet, I'm, I'm I bet you won't do it again. No, it was just. I uh, bet you won't. <laughs> Literally, like they, that's that song. I bet you won't. I bet you won't. I bet you won't. <laughs> It is it just whoo, that was just that was almost in that John Walker level. Just you just sitting there just oh yeah afterwards. Yeah, I, we, I think we need to do top like top ten Marvel worst Marvel ass whoopings because that you know split them off one live action and one comics because Lord comics gonna <laughs> be kind of hard. Live action, okay, but comics. You know, John Walker, action. John Walker's literally at that list. Like he's like <laughs> The John Walker ass whooping for live action. Okay, I was gonna say comic wise, yeah, he, he he gets the disrespectful one. John Walker is like the top three spots. Yeah, yeah. he really for real. <laughs> he is the top. It's like at at number one, John Walker. Number two, John Walker. Number three, John Walker. Uh, you did honorary you, mention. Honorary <laughs> mention. John Walker. <laughs> I was like, as, well, as, as, as bad as Cap got the whooping in Winter Soldier, mm -hmm. it wasn't disrespectful. It was like, that was a fight. It was like, like I could I could take your shield from, I was like, I could take your cookie and just walk off and you can't do it. <laughs> the look she gave him, I could take your cookie if I wanted to. <laughs> you gonna give me this cornbread. That's what it looked like. It was, it was, I'm gonna give you this, you gonna give me this cornbread moment. That's exactly what it was. I'm like, you gonna give me this cornbread? No, I'm not. And that's just how he said, No, I'm not. <laughs> the look on his face was that terrible. supposed to threaten me? I don't know. I don't know but I'm a, I'm just, I just felt bad for the black for a uh, brave star that got pulled into this. It's like, I know you got to back up your boy and all, but you should have done, you should have looked, you should have looked at Bucky and followed Bucky because Bucky <laughs> literally was like. I ain't got nothing to do with this. That's the one. That was the one thing. I, that was the one part of that that I was like, wait a second, this wasn't written by black folk. Because if you see your man about to challenge Dora Milaje, and you just see Sam take one step back, <laughs> and your black senses didn't kick in, like, wait a minute, why did the other black dude step back? Mm. Yeah. When 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 Sam went to say something, Bucky's like, mm -mm. Sam didn't really fight him. Nah. <laughs> he was just like, well, they're going to kill him, and he was just like. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad about the fact that Sam was just busting out laughing the entire time. <laughs> yeah. Busting out laughing. Yeah. Lamar got raised out in the county, clearly. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was no there's no no respect whatsoever. And then got the cheat code used on you. You know, like mm -hmm. messing thing, around, thing. messing around with y'all down. <laughs> lost my damn arm. Mm -hmm. I wasn't even supposed to be here with this. <laughs> so <sighs> Just, I was supposed to be sitting back and eating cake with Sarah. With who? None of your business. That's mm -hmm. none of your business. <laughs> uh -uh. Still, still was like when he looked at it. We his arm go limp. It's like, dang! It's almost <laughs> like she figured you out. <laughs> <laughs> you kind of felt bad about yourself. They literally gave him. Uh, uh, they, they gave Bucky. We brought you in this world. We'll take you out. Type. Pretty of much. It was, it was just one of them things. He was like, oh, geez. All right, fine. We don't want him dead. <laughs> They we need gave his shoulder a, a blood handshake in his arms. <laughs> <laughs> we we told you we wanted Zemo. We wanted Zemo at dawn. <laughs> you knew better than to step in. Now look at you. Uh, that was one of the moments. You knew better. Why are you even doing this? Why are you here? I was like, you could just imagine. Now take, now take your good hand. Pick up your arm. <laughs> right. <laughs> you lucky. We like you. You know. <laughs> Oh my God! So, <laughs> so that's the news for the for the week so far. Uh, hopefully, things turn out better for Jonathan Majors. Uh, I, I hope this whatever this other piece of evidence does clear everything, but it leads to the question: Is the damage done? This better be the Johnny Cochran level of evidence. Like you better say, love an oversized hand come out of nowhere and be like, "Excuse me." Let my boy go. You made me I'm think of that Jamie Foxx episode when he's putting on the boy. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> I look. I know. I, I know. I can speak for all of us on that. It's just that you know. It's it's 
it's disheartening when you can sit there and see a guy that had so much going for him. And again, we are always rooting for everybody black, but to fall that fast. <laughs> black it, it just, it <laughs> oh, you know what? Before yeah, go ahead, Karen. Go ahead. <laughs> before I'm sorry, what? I didn't get to put the other two pieces up here, but I will. Mm -hmm. But I want you to know this will be one of the last two times because it's going to be a time where this is going to be said again. Mm -hmm. Manuel Godoy of Black mm -hmm. Sands. <laughs> We're doing whole names. Lord Jesus. Whole names. Because okay. because I'm going to tell you, you called out, first off, you bullied a black woman. Mm -hmm. An unnecessary move. An unnecessary move. So yes, we're calling you out. We were rooting for you. We really were until you know, it came out. And I'm not just talking about Mighty Z. Apparently, it was some other stuff. Mm -hmm. Some very uh, questionable business practices. But then you turned around. Not only did you bully her, you tried to get her off of social media, off mm -hmm. of a critique of your book. I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. Someone asked her to do a review. They, she did the review. She spoke honestly about it. This is how that works. You didn't like it. You said it was tarnishing your brand. I'm mm -hmm. sorry if one black girl managed to tarnish your brand, not you putting your foot in your mouth. And doubling down. <clears throat> and doubling down. Two for, one, two for one sale in foolishness. I'll yeah. say this, though. I, I, I was, I, I'm still... <laughs> I'll say this: I'm still rooting for him for different reasons. I, mm -hmm. I've I've worked with this individual, my uncle Doy, and I and I sensed and I got there's a, when you're working in this industry, there's different people who have different levels of sensitivity. There's some people who you could tell that were bullied. There's some people who could tell had no hands, couldn't fight. There's, you could just tell. <laughs> <laughs> you know, what I mean, no, I'm serious. Like yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you could tell different things, mm -hmm. and um, um, and there's different people who are steal who steal. There's different people who are liars. Like I'm in Southern California, I'm in Los Angeles. You get all types of individuals in in this creator business, and my Man, Godoy is one archetype of many archetypes. Um, you know, um, so uh, sometimes, like I, when I experience what have experienced, I uh, I'm on, I'm all about being a little bit professional when it gets to that level because I mm -hmm. do I do I think it's uh, remember Reservoir Dogs when they yes. start arguing, mm -hmm. they stop acting like. That that scene bothers me to this day. Like <laughs> it still bothers me to this day because I felt it was unnecessary. They're saying that people of African descent cannot focus, organize, and execute on any type of business, whether it's crime business or mm -hmm. um, uh, 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 any legal business. And so, in my interactions with uh, Madam Godoy, I just kept it where I don't want to be that scene in Reservoir Dogs. I'm just gonna be like, all right, professionally. It was great working with you. I want to keep um, growing. I want to, in the future, love to follow up, blah, blah, blah. That's how I keep it because, again, different sensitivities. The pandemic brought in a lot of different type of personalities from yes. people that were used to be okay. All of a sudden, after that, things were a little bit more tense. And so for me, um, Manuel Godoy doing what he did in Shark Tank was still a major move for the Black creator community. And it regardless was. of, it was still a major thing. I mean, I was at DreamHack and people kept thinking I was uh, uh, Black Sands. We got that four times. We're like, not, we're not Black Sands. You know, and it, there was a moment where I, I thought to myself and I was like, he is pushing the needle. Um, mm -hmm. Is he the anti-hero right now in the community? Maybe. But yeah. for me, for me, I, I agree. I've heard about uh, the bullying. I've heard of all those things. But because I'm from Cali and because I'm where I'm from, like, I, I see when I see him, I see the playground and I see that I'm like, dude, don't <laughs> like it's one of those things like he goes that way. I'm like, you know, my it's one of those things when you're in the playground, it's like, okay, that guy has hands, that person's a tattletale, that person it's like that. I see, <laughs> says, I see yeah. you know what I mean? Like I just see that kind of world when I when I, whenever I interact with a lot of um individuals. And so I would just say this. I I do I I in I will say that I, I am rooting for him to grow. I do hope that certain business practices get mature. Mm -hmm. um, I do hope that there are certain parameters that are better. Because mm -hmm. I, I don't know if you folks know, when, you, when you're a black creator, you're interacting with different people. Maybe there's money involved and all that. Mm -hmm. And we don't have a, a, a 
black business culture and African descent business culture. I lived in China. Mm -hmm. I know how Chinese do it. I know mm -hmm. how the Americans do it. Everyone has a business culture, but ours are not quite defined. Right. So like <laughs> you have those things that are happening. And, and for me, instead of I, I personally am like, good I keep doing your thing. I just hope that we can develop a better business culture when we're dealing with, with each other. Not yet that's with the with the community. Yeah. And that's and that leads into what I was gonna say next is you called out the blurred community, the community that you were catering to. Mm -hmm. So you can't it, it's it it's a good way to create uh mm -hmm. uh like you said, Obi Two, that mm -hmm. it's a bad practice. This it's a bad practice. You don't it's go bad practice. Place. It was like you know, like we were pushing for you when we. I've even did it on the show when you made it on Shark Tank. When you made it on Shark Tank, I it was articles, an article on the website, and everything. I was all for it. Mm -hmm. I, I'm like, dude, you, you're like you said, he's pushing the needle. But that's what you did was not cool, right. you know. And then to turn around and turn your back on the basically. Uh, call out the blurred community like you did and i'm like no it's the blurred community you're creating this for you should understand that mm -hmm. and you can't it's not cool it's but not it's, cool but it's there, just there, there's there's a point where i'm sorry i don't mean no, 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 go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. um i am all for like i said before i'm all for pushing black content creators um everybody can make mistakes that's fine if you learn from them this is not that case there needs to be a place where we hold our standards higher than what this man is putting forward. Mm -hmm. He has adamantly, adamantly been saying this is the way that he wants to operate and is trying to turn it into or make it seem as though none of the things that he said has ever happened. Mm -hmm. That does not show growth. That shows yeah. that you do not take any, you do not accept Can any of the repercussions that have come up. That doesn't show that you can at least acknowledge that you made some type of error in your judgment if you don't mean it i'm right. not i am i do not want this person in this blurred community i don't yeah, i'm sorry he, 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 he has done something that's that irreparable i was i was the first one that, i was one of the first ones to say you need a pr team Bad because man. you shouldn't get on your lives and continue on but in that manner, it's. I'm not, just saying, but that's his brand. I, 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 totally I don't want. Get, I don't want that brand. I do I, not no, want that I brand. Mean, I mean, I, I agree. I, I understand no. it. I, then there's I just. No, then I, I need. I need. I need us to stop letting things like this slide. I'm not. Having it's it's the actions that's being taken by, by the, the actions that's being taken by the at least the majority of the blur community. The the actions that's being taken are making him accountable. Yeah, like we're making you accountable for reacting the way you did. You don't, you can't do that. Like, we're not tearing you down, but we're holding you accountable. But we're holding right. you accountable because, once again, it's Will Smith and Chris Rock. We can't be fighting in front of the peoples. In front you of know? <laughs> I don't. We're I like, agree. I, I'm just. I'm just want to say. I don't know if you noticed. He's this, and I agree with you. He hasn't changed. But mm -hmm. one thing I noticed is that he. This is. This is. Uh, there's a marketing strategy when you're being a, a black creator one of the hardest things come with a uh, marketing strategy that works and sticks every time and i watched his growth and he he he's like the trump of the community where he, he doubles down no he doubles down on activity he stokes the flames of anger he constantly he's been doing this for years and we've been watching 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 and watching and watching and That's seeing him, he how he's used that to get to where he is in Shark Tank. And, and on top of that, on top of that, and I do agree with you, Lady Mandalore. I do agree with you. Accountability is the most important thing, at least for me personally, in terms of integrity. What I see is that because his marketing strategy is that form, what he's done is found a demographic of people that I believe have been underserved by the blurred community, in a sense. And that's the, the Hotep community. And he's he's galvanized that group in such a way that I'm I'm actually uh, surprised and in, in awe that he's grabbed this community. I call them the Black Janissaries. This community <laughs> of diehard, I'm talking diehard folks that will always be behind him. And that 
And I agree with you on everything you're saying, but as a person who studies martial arts, such as a person who studies like um, people who do strategic things, I'm watching, I'm like, oh, this is very interesting how he this still has some, been, some force, He has so. this army so. of people that have been forgotten. I'm talking the Moors, Black Israelites, Egypt, Egyptian, Hotels. This, this is this core community, and he's galvanized them and made them part of his, his demographic and has what almost like weaponized them. And now, I guess there's that because other folks, other folks in Blur community haven't found a way to to control that in his army and hold him accountable. I think it's it's just it's growing to where it is now. And again, like I said, to me, I see a sensitive guy. I see a sensitive guy doing business. I do believe in holding him accountable. And I, in my business practices, I've held him accountable and kept it 100. He always thought I was bullying him. Because I, I held him accountable, but um again, <laughs> I, I what I what I will say is that um I I think just like you said we we, we have to kind of keep it in the home. There's there's with, with guys like that or individuals like that, um, if if they if we don't get to the heart of what is at the heart of his issues, we will it won't. It won't go anywhere. And I'll, I'll use another example. There was a person who was very dear, and rest in peace, Maya Crown. Wonderful woman. Yes, yes, mm-hmm. yes. Wonderful woman. Yes. And she was like our number one fan. Great. There's something that happened, and I was watching, and the, the, the conversation changed. And there was a lot of uh, tenseness. And there was things being said, and we were very uh, surprised. I didn't know what was going on. But I did know, one I don't want to attack again the rules. I don't want to. Uh, there's no. There's no. I don't want to attack or retort with the perspective of a woman of African descent. Just keep, I just backed off a bit, and also I was looking at the world. <laughs> the world was going through this mental health crisis, shift. <laughs> just total shift. And I was like, I don't think something's going. Something's off. I don't know what it is, but let's not say anything. I know. Even yeah, though no we're way. being attacked, our reputation is being attacked, and I don't know why. But I'm not saying anything. And then later on comes out. There's 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 complications. And I don't know what's going on in other people's homes. And I think as a creator community, we're 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 creating just like you are all are under this this weight of so many different priorities. And I think sometimes those things come out in such a negative way. And like I'm so happy that I never retorted or sent anything back because it came out there was a there's a medical condition. Yeah. And yeah. and I, to, and 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 she, she was hard. She, she yeah hard. She right and and she was a. The foundation, she was a foundational element of of the black, the blurred community, like huge foundational uh, um, person, and I'll never take that away from her. And I, 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 what's the word? I uphold her at a high status of being one of those people to do that in her mm-hmm. time. And I, I agree with you. There's a, there has to be a better way to hold folks accountable to develop better business practices amongst us. Yeah, but. You know, not only that, but they have to be able to receive that accountability. You have to say, you know what, to kind of look back and say, you know what, I might have. Okay, this is where I, because I know exactly what you mean. You like he's he's sticking to his guns. That's a good practice, but however, you got to watch who it who it is. You can't let the you can't let the persona overdo your business. Like you can sit there, you can sit there and be the villain all you want to, but you can't be the villain at a time when you have to be the businessman. Because he can be the villain, he can sit there and be this extremist, extreme. And I'm a and I'm a wrestling fan, so I see heel personas when I see them. But the problem is, is when the heel persona gets in the way of your business, and that's what and that's what ultimately will do him in. Because, yeah. like like Chris said, you don't have a PR you don't have a PR person that goes, you need to sit down right now. Just because yeah, that ain't the battle. That ain't the that ain't the yeah. battle you want, you know? right? Because there's a that, war you're creating. There's a battle you didn't need to fight. You exactly. Just, you could have just took the critique. Of, you you, you could have yeah, took the critique he, and moved on. You didn't just said, you know he what? He said thank you. He could have said yeah. thank you for your criticism, or said, you know what? Because you have such great insight, let me invite you onto this, and we'll bring you into this because I want opinions. What have you just done? You have opened the door for other creators to come in and help you with said product. That's what a that's what a PR slash businessman does. You don't first and foremost, there's no such thing as black bad bad 
Bad. Bad. Bad press? <laughs> yeah, bad bad press. publicity or bad, bad, bad press? Thank you. One of those. Thank you, thank you. Because apparently I failed the spelling bee. Like, <laughs> or child brain. <laughs> yeah, child. I blame Obi. But yes, there's no such thing as that. So, you, you know, great, great artists, creators, businessmen have learned to take negative situations and turn them into positives. That is a classic business case of failing to take what could have been a great moment to bring folks in, and instead you double down. And again, you also fail the number two rule of business. You don't sour your target audience. You called out every blur and said, for lack of better words, you don't matter. You told an entire community that backed you up since your since your rise against Hollywood, when he says he was shunned from Hollywood because they didn't they didn't believe in showing uh, accurate descriptions of Egyptians, he says he went on Shark Tank and challenged Mr. Wonderful. And he Mr. Wonderful sat there and said, "quote unquote, I'm sorry, your comics will never make it just because nobody wants to see it." And you had Mark Cuban and Kevin Hart go, "Well, we disagree. There's an there's an opportunity for this," and he made a deal for that. So, yes, you have open doors and situations to prove that you can do it. But again, you soured your target base. Once you sour that, that's hard to come back. That is that is that is what essentially he, a, a, a that's essentially a business killer. Yeah, what he has done, what he has done mm -hmm. and is this would have either way he would have played it, whether it was the positive or the negative. Mm -hmm. What he has done is open that door for other black indie comic creators mm -hmm. to come through. Whether it was a positive reaction or a negative reaction, it did open that door mm -hmm. to That's say, hey. Thing I'm thankful for. <laughs> <laughs> that, is, that is true. I just, I just want, I just, as much as that door is open, I do not want his example to be reflected upon others because yeah. that's how they're going to view it. Can you, can you, can you, can he I, I, re recourse I, I, or whatever? I, yeah, I'm pretty sure he could. Mm -hmm. You know, if you just learn to address that said community, mm -hmm. you know, learn that community. You you have that community. Work with that community first. We'll mm -hmm. worry about the rest later, about getting everybody else on board. Right now, the community matters. Mm -hmm. Everything else will fall in line. You just can't address that community in that in that fashion. We we have enough against us. <laughs> right. We have enough against us. To not have our very own burn burn the bridge, so to speak. I I think I think there were a, I think that because I want to say I'm hoping that it's the majority of the community because I don't know, mm -hmm. but I think the majority of the comic creator community has shown that that is something that they don't want to emulate. That it's not really going to blow back on them because the majority of them have taken a stand to say. My guy, that's not the move. Yeah, it's it's mm -hmm. that is a that is a standard that you should not fall below. Mm -hmm. Right, Be, below the line of Jesus. Yeah, well, you're yeah. rubbing off on me. <laughs> I think what it was. I it's think it's, 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 it, what it what it's done is you know had he just left the critique, and I get it. You're a creative. You you wrote you wrote and did your books. I get it. You're feeling sensitive, like mm -hmm. Erica Badu. I feel I'm sensitive that's, about my shit. That's mm -hmm. and that's fine. And that's fine. And I, mm -hmm. we nobody said anything about that, right? No. But you went after a lone person whose job is literally doing that, and it didn't. A work. year later, a year later, and it was like you sit back. You know, there are certain things you know how you see things on social media, and you like I should answer to that, and it ain't necessary. Mm -mm. You can leave mm -hmm. it be. You can just say, you know what? That's just one person's critique. <laughs> Kevin <Yeah>. Durant. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Kevin Durant's good, good example. But Ooh, it has one of those things. So, you know, you could have just, you <laughs> just, yeah, yeah, Brock got it. <laughs> but you could have just left that as is and said, okay. And like, like Black Spartan said, there's different ways to look at it. You like, you answered it. You didn't have to. You could have just said, okay, that's just her critique. Mm -hmm. You could have taken a step back and said, "Well, maybe I need to take a look at it and maybe see what's going on and what she sees and whatever. Maybe I need to reach out and talk to this person 
and say, hey, tell me what it was you didn't like or did like and would you like to see more of? Every critique is an opportunity. Yeah. Every so, it is. That, re- that requires a level of respect that I do not think that man had. <laughs> it was, it was I, bad. I'll say you know, it. Bad. It was just bad. It was just bad move. Long bad long. form, Peter. Bad form. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll say this. I mean, I'm, I'll just flip it. Uh, like I said, like you folks are, you know, you do this um, podcast, you do these reviews, and you're kind of like the the voice of um, the blurred community in terms of comics and different content. And I said it, I said it before. There's a there's a lack of a culture of certain business practices. But mm-hmm. one thing I also um, explored as I was doing content creation is um, certain philosophies and like. There's a philosophy that we all know that's, I, I think we all know that's core to our identity, which is Ubuntu, right? Mm-hmm. Hopefully folks know Ubuntu. And if folks mm-hmm. don't know Ubuntu, then I don't think that anybody will be able to properly hold um, 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 some, certain creators accountable. And Ubuntu is the, is, is the principle of thinking that we are because we are, right? There's right. a, mm-hmm. you know, Mandela's famous for talking about Ubuntu. It's a major philosophy, African philosophy. Um, it's a it's a philosophy that other cultures in different small ways have, and I think what everyone's saying here is that the lack of uh, the spirit of Ubuntu or the thinking of Ubuntu is, mm-hmm. is 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 at the heart of the problem, and that's what I think. Like, uh, for, forget the whole talking about the lone person, just existing in a way and doing business in a way that there's no you're not using the principles of Ubuntu which he should know closer to the type of work he does with the Egyptian and all that. Mm-hmm. If he can't tap into that, then then that that's where I think the blurred community uh, uh, should should come in. But again, I, I want to hold the blurred community accountable to, for not talking about those principles and, and setting those, those, those things. I like, hear these things that are practices as a community that we need to do because that, that's what I'm seeing. I, I, when I started, when I got into this, there was no orientation. There's no one saying this or that. Like it's barely it was barely happening. It was organic. But I, mm-hmm. I think just as we need he needs to he needs to be held accountable. I want to also hold the community accountable. How are we putting the principles of Ubuntu, which is positive, uh, in, 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 in effect? How are we enforcing that? And that's I think that's what's key because if you don't have that, I, like I said, sensitive people, people who are going through whatever is going on, is gonna pop it's off. Gonna come up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So but, we're going to uh, continue before we do that. Sorry, I'm going to take, take this break. We're going to continue because I like this conversation. I love these type of conversations. But <laughs> we're going to come back. We're going to talk about uh, Ogunchuku, about his production company, Colonel Nut Productions, and more about Ubuntu and all this. See, I didn't. This thing, this, this platform has a way. It has a way. <laughs> <laughs> so we'll be right back. Fast money, y'all. We get ready to finish up the game here. Now your teammate done scored enough points. I think you just need to get one answer right to win. You ready? Ready. Okay, name a podcast. Blurred's Eye View. Who should have won that Oscar? Angela Bassett. Who did win the Oscar? Don't give a damn. Name a cartoon. Ed, Ed, and Eddie. Name a guest from question one. Carl Jones. All right, that did it. Congratulations, you won the game. Hellspawn Cosplay. Now we only need a one name. Hieroglyphics. You can stop now. Josh Evans. Chase Bowen. Josh Brown. <laughs> y'all cut more. the commercial. He gonna be on for a while. Blurred's Eye View. Be sure to peep the podcast on all platforms or stream every episode on Always Press Record TV. APR TV now downloadable on Amazon and Roku. APR TV, the power of podcasting in the palm of your hand. Get it today. This just in. Feeling groggy in the morning? Coffee just can't give you that pep in the step that you're looking for? Try Pop Starts for that great get up and go that adults need. Pop Starts has the vitamin and nutrients that only grown ups can partake in. And with flavors such as Tossed salad and scrambled eggs, and Jack Daniels and Bud Light flavors to start your day or end it. There's nothing better to wake up to unless you count that depressing cubicle job. Well, anyway, try Pop Starts today. Pop Starts is not part of the Kellogg's Corporation. Pop Starts could give you diarrhea. Pop Starts are not found in your local grocery store. <laughs> All right, we are back. <laughs> I just love watching people's face in the background when as, as I'm playing that commercial. I swear to God, it's it brings me joy. Uh, <laughs> absolute joy. We are here with Obi Juku. He is the owner of uh Colina Productions. Uh I keep looking at this banner, man. This banner in this background is it's it's doing stuff for me. Let's talk about your company. 
let's talk yeah. about the projects you got going. Uh, we we were getting in some really dope conversation about Ubuntu and the teachings. Let's 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 go at it. Yeah, no. At. Um, let's start with um, and then you y'all can come in and 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 be critical. Like uh, we, I want to take a step back and say, from our conversation that for Clona, we are um, especially all, all the all the people who are working within Clona, Clona Productions. Um, we are people of critique. We like mm-hmm. critique. Um, I'm a ch- athlete. I just all I know. If I'm not getting critique, I feel like people are just gassing me up. I, I need that <laughs> hardcore stuff. So mm-hmm. that's the type of uh, uh, culture we have created within our company, and we had to do it because the artists are sensitive. So we have to teach them mm-hmm. early on, communicate a lot, and be open and ready for critique because you're gonna get it, and it's not well, personal. Well, I'm so, gonna say first off, whoever did the art for your banner, yeah, it's very clean. Yeah, yeah. It's I very think, clean. It's not mm-hmm. it's not it's not choppy, it's not all over the place. There's times I've read, you know, even mainstream comics where the art doesn't match the story sometimes. It kind of mm-hmm. gets off and it throws you off because, you know, by law we're visual people. Mm-hmm. And so when I see art like what I see behind you, this is like this is very clean art. That's why I say it's giving me Saturday morning cartoon vibes. It's giving me static shock cartoon feels. You know, it's, it's a very clean line, and, and I, I like it. I dig it. I'm digging it. Thank you. Yeah, one of our artists, over, we work with artists around the world, and he did a really great job capturing the essence um, of this. Is, is this kind of a representation of our multiverse? And so Colonut Productions, as a culture, the word Colonut mm-hmm. um, is a is the actual Colonut. It's the actual bean. It's mm-hmm. cousin of the caffeine bean in, um, in, in Africa. It used to be in Coca-Cola. Mm-hmm. So it's just caffeine in it. But in uh, Nigeria, particularly the Igbo, I'm Igbo. And when, you, um, when you're celebrating something, graduation, marriage, or someone comes to your house, you offer them kola nut. You pray over it, you break it open, and then you eat it. It's super bitter. And that means we walk, that means we get welcomed. So if I came on this podcast and I wasn't offered kola nut, that means we're enemies. So kola nut is a kind of like an African tea ceremony, particularly mm-hmm. West African tea ceremony, where it's like, I welcome you. So kola nut productions, we welcome you to our content. That's why we call it kola nut productions. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's a dope concept, and I like that. Uh, it, if had we been in person, I would have offered you. <laughs> I mean, yeah, it's a big but, deal. But, uh, but but I and I like that because there's there's a thing that goes well. There's this been this wave. There's been this wave that's been going around the past couple of years of our people, meaning black people, uh, finding our roots, finding our heritage, finding our pasts, mm-hmm. and you know, understanding traditions and why those traditions are in place. And I think that's dope that you just expressed that because I'm pretty sure p- people that's listening and watching, they probably didn't know. Yeah. And you know, that's a, it's a dope intro solo. Yeah, very few <laughs> people mm-hmm. know about the, why it's called Kona Productions. Um, and um, there's a lot of like little insiders, but that that's a big thing about a culture. It's a welcoming um, experience, and I think if you, I think when you're coming up with your company, um, at black creators or creators of African descent, you should think about those things. So then it can kind of frame a lot of how you how you present your content, how you think about your content. All right. Um, so Colonel Productions is that we've been doing this for a decade. We are the world's largest black comic universe. And I'll explain why. <laughs> <laughs> Um, and um, you know, this is a sample of our of our of our our comic universe. Um, uh, we have in print probably seven seven comics in print. I think there's about five titles, um, twenty seven mm-hmm. titles on webtoon, and we have a hundred stories nice. planned for release throughout the year. And so we're positioning ourselves as an African Disney, uh, just a an <laughs> IP factory, mm-hmm. if you will. Um, of course, Saturday cartoons, Toonami, all those things inspired us and, and is why you see what you see and, 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 and why you get those feels. If you feel that in some of our stories, um, our, our, our main focus is that um, we looked at, as we were creating a lot of stories, um, our multiverse came up to be the Neo-African comic universe. So Neo-Africa, we first mentioned Neo-Africa during a Kickstarter in 2014. Mm-hmm. And... The reason we mentioned Neo Africa was because of our the influence of Akira, Neo Tokyo, right? Yeah. Yeah. And you know, as we know, Akira influenced a lot of people, right? Mm-hmm. And so 
um, we were like New Africa. And the reason I put in New, I created this concept of New Africa was I, I studied, uh, my major was politics and Chinese. I could speak Chinese. My focus was African Chinese relations in my bachelor's. And I had already read about this idea of an African Renaissance. Apparently, one of the old um, independent um, African leaders, Kwame Nkrumah, all those, that group of folks, there was talk about there'll be one day there'll be an African Renaissance where, you know, there's a part two where everything's great for the continent. Basically, not just Wakanda, the whole continent <laughs> is in that yeah. state and the diaspora. That is an actual thing we can find on, on Wikipedia. And when I heard about this, Af it's called a second African Renaissance or something like that. I was like, what if that's how our, some of our stories are placed? Either you're in during the African Renaissance already happened and you're in Neo Africa, mm -hmm. you're post that Renaissance in the future in space, or mm -hmm. you're just getting up to that. And so we created a five multiverse, uh, five multiverse, um, comic universe where there's different versions of of neo africa and so that's kind of what we're about right now we're pushing these comics we're going to con conventions we're doing podcasts really coming out there and then uh just kind of sharing our work finding our voice finding our marketing no negative marketing we decided not to do that <laughs> <laughs> we decided not to do that um because, I mean, yeah, we just said not to do that. Because I, I don't know what it is. In Cali, you can't be talking like that. It's kind of <laughs> too dangerous. <laughs> it's too dangerous in SoCal to be talking like that. Um, so we um, we personally um, decided to take on a very – those who are adventurous, who love to travel, those who want to know about culture and not just about skin. So we don't do storytelling. I think storytelling is going to be done soon. We do mm -hmm. culture telling. Mm -hmm. I made that up. I started saying that three weeks ago, but culture telling. So we're telling you stories of via culture. So Red Origins, our first comic with that character with the red, he, it, we're using elements of Pan-African mysticism, all the juju, mm -hmm. voodoo, all that. We turn it into what you see in Harry Potter and what you see in Naruto, and we really focus on that. You see the two people, the, the guy and the girl, the girl in the hijab and the yes. guy. Yeah. These are, these are, these are, this was based off Somali pirates. We were sitting there and we were like, oh, um, you know, there's no, we were, we were sitting there and we we're like, oh, they call it Paris of the Caribbean, but how many Caribbean did you see, <laughs> right? <laughs> the whole thing. And so it's like, Caribbeans have had a huge kind of, Africans, Caribbeans, we're not all, we're like, oh, we're afraid of water. We don't have seafarers, we don't have pirates. Mm -hmm. So we were sitting there and my brother who always, cause I lived in China and my brother was like, yo, tell us, tell us that story. Tell the writing team a story. I said, mm -hmm. tell the story of what? Tell the twin story. I'm a twin. Mm -hmm. And so when I was living in China, my Chinese father would always tell me this story that there were two Somali children, twins, that mm -hmm. were orphaned, that were raised in China and were cool, had great abilities and were raised in certain, like, like they, they picked up the language fast. They were really good athletically, martial arts and all that. And they grew up. And then they found out that their parents were pirates. The Somali, these Somali twins, a boy and a girl, were t their, their parents were pirates. Mm -hmm. And they went on this kind of odyssey to find their parents from China to Somalia. And I told the story and my brother was just so hype about it. He's like, we got to turn that into a story. And I said, okay, let's take Somali pirates and put them in space. And that's what you have. One becomes a space cop, mm -hmm. you know, this one. Another mm -hmm. one becomes a space pirate, the, one, the woman with hijab. And so we just, again, culture telling is our primary um, <laughs> that is so dope. <laughs> that is so dope. Uh, uh, focus. It, I, I, you know, I think that concept alone uh, is dope. And because, you know, and, and, and when you said when you hit Pirates in Space, it made me think of Tahanisi Coates' run on Black mm -hmm. Panther, where there was that, that arc where the Wakandas went to, uh, went to space. Yep. And they were they they did their thing out there. They have their own thing. So it, like when I hear these type of stories, when I hear these type of characters, and there's something behind the characters, mm -hmm. which is also a, a, a major plus, and finding out that there's more to it, you know, like you mentioned, Pirates of the Caribbean. Great movie, but where's the Caribbeans? You know, <laughs> where 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 are we at? We we don't get seen, you know, when you're finding out their stories that we were seafaring pirates, we you know, we were out there. Black Cowboy, we were out there. If anything, we outnumbered 
<laughs> the other ones, you know, but that's not that's not what society or most media will tell you. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, they don't. These are stories that need to be told. And I'm, I'm, it's impressive that you called it culture telling because that's something that is essentially getting that would get lost, that would get lost when you're talking about our cultures. You know, we could tell the stories all day, but, you know, when you hear about like the grandmothers and the great grandmothers and the grandfathers and they, they tell you these stories, they're telling you stories from their childhood and their upbringing and why they do certain things. It's a lost. I don't want to say lost. It was a losing practice that is mm-hmm. now getting shifted. Mm-hmm. You know, as the, I said, is getting the shifted. Medium is different. You know, yeah. the, medi- the medium, the 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 way it's being told is, is shifting. It's, it's Even the way you tell a storm. When you're talking about storm, I got really excited. You're like, oh, this person lived for years, a goddess. And I was yeah. like, oh, this is great. Um, I can't wait to tell them about Red Hunter. Red Hunter is our newest comic. It's on Webtoon. And it's literally about an ancestral father that a group right now in northern Ghana traced their roots to. The Dagomba mm-hmm. tribe traced their roots to one guy who had this amazing power. Tahazi, T-O-H-A-Z-I-E, Tahazi the Red Hunter. Real. And I'm sitting there, and I'm like, oh, wow, this is amazing. Like, this is a character. What do we do with a character that's a true ancestral father? Because I, I don't know about y'all in the blur community. We'd be talking about calling on your ancestors. I'm calling Cap because nobody knows the name of their ancestors. They're yeah. not, people are not digging. If you're going to call your ancestors, mm-hmm. know my name. And I really, I'm really um, emphatic or are really about it because I, I, I can't I, I can't accept superficial things like that. If we're gonna call on our ancestors and, and figure out the ancestral process and and, and, and and call on them to help us in different elements of our lives, we gotta like dig deep and, and, and know what's going on and, and, and take and, and go the distance. And so that's why I, I wrote Red Hunter. When we wrote Red Hunter, I thought to myself, okay, we have this ancestral hero and then you look at the Dagombo now, it's maybe we can do it with almost like a Samurai Jack, where like, you know, in the beginning, essentially like he was a fighter and then he, he kind of like, he's connected to water. He falls asleep underground, mm-hmm. hundreds of years pass and he's woken up by the sound of a drum and he emerges into the future, Neo-Africa. Mm-hmm. And he's like, where's my descendant? He's a warmonger, he's a king. And his descendants is down to this little slum family with one eye, like, this little tiny family, their entire, all the descendants have kind of squandered the legacy or there was infighting. So that was all that's left. And mm-hmm. he's kind of figuring out his way. And so that's why when he said, talk about storm and talking about power and, and how there's this sort of immortal immortality that storm carries and how it just dominates the comics and how interesting it is. Here's a actual um, character that we took and, and use that same mentality and so that's kind of what i'm excited about again culture telling i didn't create just some black person that has superpowers we, we don't do that we're like okay uh, what is this tribe and oh it's a dogombo it's in northern ghana okay what is this what it can do this person has it's a hunter has shooting arrows i said okay that's cool what he used to, what has this what is what this actual real person used to do in legend and we take mm-hmm. all that just like thor and mm-hmm. we turn into something else. And so that's typically all we do throughout this entire multiverse is just search for um, content that actually exists. So there's points where, where um, it tells itself and it's, it's very real, right? I like that. Hmm. I like that. No, I, it's, it's, it's good that you mentioned that because even um, I remember Static Shock being on the air and yeah. Uh, there was an episode where you know he was an African, yes. and you, you got to introduced to a version of Anansi the Spider. Yeah, I love and that. Which I, whom I had read about when I was in elementary school. So you know, when I see it, and I'm like, yo, I know who that is, you know, mm-hmm. and the stories that's behind it. And then seeing Orlando Jones portray that same character, and seeing those type of characters have those backgrounds, you really. Using your imagination is not even passe at that point because you have something to build on, like you mentioned, Storm or uh, Thor. You have something, you have a character to build on who was at least to that nationality 
was real. Now, and then you have us in the African uh, diaspora, all these characters that, you know, this is why I'm glad you're around because you have characters that were, you know, their legends might be getting washed away or mm -hmm. they don't know who they're talking to or, you know, you you have no true connection to who you want to speak to. Mm -hmm. And so when you have these these stories about the, the Smiley Pirates and Toasting the Red Hunter and all these other <coughs> characters and they actually have backgrounds to build off of, that makes a better story. You know, it makes a, a laster longing, a longer lasting story, I should say. So yeah, and it protects it from whitewashing. But you know, that's just that a too. <laughs> <laughs> that, that too. That's, that's why I said we we're moving from storytelling to culture telling because like it kind of protects it from it from that. I don't want to. You, like, you, you can say it. You can yeah, say it. It does. It, it, does. Like, say it. it does. It definitely does. I, I. I. We have to. We, that's that's the reason why we do it. I that's a big fear of mine. Mm -hmm. It's a mm -hmm. big big fear. And I thought to myself, okay, what's the best way? And I, I'm like, okay, if you tell a story on the continent, mine is maybe South Africa. Mm -hmm. For the most part, all mm -hmm. the characters will be of African descent. Right. You know, if mm -hmm. you watched, um, um, I don't know if you saw the Netflix series with that Queen Warrior. My wife was actually watching it. Yes. Uh, what's is now? I, I want to say Naomi. Nae, Nae, Nzinga, Nae. Queen Nzinga. 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 Real yeah. person. Yeah. Real yeah. person. Jada Pinkett is doing the narration in the beginning, which is interesting. And mm -hmm. it's like, it is. There's, I, it's very I, interesting. I, I, I loved. I loved it. I watched the whole thing, and I loved it because we already have a story for that, and it was like, it again to me it was culture telling, and I saw the way I saw all people. Of the, you know, I could tell if just basically people of African descent all in this film, mm -hmm. right? You know, killing white people. We have our we have our stories, <laughs> right? Oh, we have our stories. <laughs> so, sometimes, sometimes we won. Sometimes we won. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, but it was. I think to me, again, it was like if I, if you ever go through a tough time, you know, think about superhero comics and all those things that, that go into Captain America, all these people, the Superman that you wear on your head, the Batman you wear on your shirt, all these mm -hmm. things, what we're doing is we're borrowing the great things that they have, the attributes, and we hope that it can help embody who we are, mm -hmm. whether it's super strength, whether it's the way you're thinking with your mind, the Batman, like just things we're calling, we're almost doing ancestral calling with characters that don't look like us. Right. And so Queen and Jenga to me was that moment where it's like, what do you, how, how do you, how are you supposed to think or how are you supposed to behave in, in in a setting where you're being marginalized actively? What kind of mentality do you need to have? Yes. What kind of grit do you need to do? How do you call on Njinga? How she, do you call on these that folks? Sis, that sister was intense. She was yeah. intense. And, it was, and I, I loved it. <laughs> it, was, it was a, and the reason I loved it too is because can anyone like, the heart she lost her son? Mm -hmm. Like some of the hardest things. The decisions she had to make, right? You would not have. No yeah. normal person could make those decisions. Exactly. That she made. And I, I think we hail Batman being gully, right? Mm. You no know, Batman will make those hard decisions. <laughs> like in mm. front yeah, of him. Yeah, he does. <laughs> you know? Yeah. And, and I, I think, I believe that we need to shift from that and start looking at those people that actually do exist. And, mm -hmm. and, and Nancy was a great example. And Nancy, that episode is burned in my memory. Because it was such an amazing episode. He had an actual trickster god from West Africa. By the mm -hmm. way, Nancy is the trickster god of Ghana. Yeah. To come over. And of course, it's always been there. And Nancy's yeah. always been there in the in the, uh, the black community in the, in the US and around. It's always been there. It's so old. It's always been there. And then it makes it a static shock. Mm -hmm. And I think they did one other episode of Return with Nancy, and it was amazing. But what, yeah. one thing I, mm -hmm. I saw is that, again, these are our archetypes. You know, people love the Joker, and I'm like, Joker is not a real trickster. It's an American understanding of what a trickster is, but we mm -hmm. do like it. And I think, I think what we what we what we need to understand is that why did we love? Why do we hear about Nancy? Why do African people of African descent like a character that lies, mess around, me, 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 uh, <laughs> plays with language, mm -hmm. shape shifts, all this kind of shifty behavior? Why? And there's something core to it that we, um, people of African descent, we like when a small animal 
uses everything at its disposal to get over a bigger animal. And we respect that. And I, so like bringing trickster gods and, and properly depicting them and putting them in your stories <laughs> and then celebrating them, I think is amazing. I think it's, it, it, it's a core to who we are. And, and it, it, sometimes it might be, it might feel like, oh, like, um, why do you like a character that does things like that? And it's like, I think, I, I think that's something as a community, we're like, okay, we got to think about that. Like, why? But it's, but it's also brilliant storytelling, too, because mm -hmm. that's the other part. Uh, because we've said it many times in the show, we've sat there and said, you know, when you bring in, when you bring in content stories that are aligned with us, that normally would not make it to the mainstream, number one, it's attractive because mm -hmm. that's what Anansi was in American Gods. His, along with Orlando Jones, and that Orlando Jones actually written his written his speeches for two of the episodes, albeit were scene stealers, but at the same time, the stories that go along with it, the, the way that he actually intertwined the Nazi in as far as, you know, speaking truth, but also saying, well, look, you guys are going to make it off this boat, but nobody else can make it off this boat. <laughs> so it is... It, that's the, it is the trickster part of it, but at the same time, it's interjecting realism, it's interjecting history. And at the same time, it's history that uh, is not being readily available to us in the, in the public school system uh, or charter, public, private, wherever you're at. It's not available. Mm -hmm. So that's also the attraction behind a lot of these stories is that not a lot of people knew that there were African goddesses and deities. Not everybody knew that we had tricksters, that we had uh, gods of iron, thunder, uh, wisdom, water. Uh, I'm trying to think of all of them on the top of my head as I'm going along. It's like well over. Let me watch the but, mermaid. Yeah, yeah they, they keep, they, they go on as far as where they, I mean, some of them are elemental. Some of them uh, represent man. Some of them represent destruction. Some of them represent peace. It's, it's amazing that as creators such as yourselves, um, really give us stories like that and it, it actually will it actually like i hope it does it encourages people to go back and say where did you get that from mm -hmm. and a gentleman like yourself can sit there and say well i'm glad you asked let me point you in this direction so that's where i always say yes our our history as a people should always be celebrated and and told and told to the next generation the next generation after that but the creative way of doing that through comic books has always cut through comics and, and, and multimedia and not just comics, but uh, anime and live action, that nature. The fact that it's told that way keeps it alive. And even more so, you are reaching other, you are reaching uh, kids as well as adults. So that's also the get, that's also the part there too, because you're really killing three birds with one stone. You are, you're introducing a new dynamic because there's plenty of content there that you can actually make stories off of and they're realistic. You don't have to add anything. You don't have to Hollywoodize anything. You can literally tell the story as it is and it writes itself. And on top of that, it is relatable because again, where else outside of the library are you gonna find, are you gonna find out about African deities? Mm -hmm. you, you'd be hard for You would be very, even you would be very fortunate to have those in your life that could tell you about it, or you'd be very mm -hmm. fortunate to have a public library that carries those books. That's just being honest. Even though outside the internet, there are multiple sources out there. But that's except why Florida. I always, that's what, yeah. I'm sorry, what you I said except Florida. Florida. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Florida, got a, Florida got a rough right now. That's yeah. Florida's on the water they, right now. They, they got something going on. I don't know what they got going I think, on. I think, I think part two of the flood just hit Florida because God went to DeSantis and said, Oh, really? Send in the flood. <laughs> <laughs> Send in the water. Jesus. It's plenty of it around there. Plenty. If I start seeing frogs pop up in Florida, I'm done. <laughs> so, uh, <nope. laughs> So, uh, Lady Lady Mandalore, you heard something? No, no, no. I was I was letting Will. 
Oh, going, no, um, uh, yeah, no, no, I'm just making a bad joke. <laughs> no, it's not a bad joke. No, it's not a bad joke. I just not thought about that. That would explain Florida right now. You you dissed African American history. Some some. <laughs> I was gonna say, wait a minute. No good comes from that. No good, you 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 dissed Ocean. So I'm like, I don't know if you want to piss her off because <laughs> if I'm correct, she kind of white. She kind of drowned an entire continent. So <laughs> yeah. I don't think you want to take that particular guy off. No. <laughs> so you mentioned you mentioned your cultures, your cultural culture telling of your stories. Yeah. You know, the characters. Yeah. Now you also mentioned anime. Yeah, anime's big. Anime's, yeah. No, we just as you know, Black Spartan said, I all we do is take what exists. And then we look at anime and say, how do they depict this? Because if you look at anime, and you got to put respect on anime because it's it's an art form that's gone for a long time. They've been depicting their culture for how many years? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And and, and then... And then, then they ignore us and they start depicting European culture, aka Attack on Titan, which is great, but still, I don't know why they just skip over us. <laughs> like Studio Ghibli, me, Hayao Miyazaki, I love Hayao Miyazaki, totally skipped over us. Mm-hmm. Most Japanese uh, creators skip over us. Um, I mean, they skipped over to Brazil with um, Hach- Michiko and Hachin. Like, oh, yeah. They just, yeah. right? Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Remember that? Yeah. Um, so, but anime to me, Akira, like, Anime is when you look at anime and look at comics, they provide examples on how you can take anything that's pre existing, even your own family history, mm-hmm. and make it to something that's cinematic. That's amazing. That's just yeah. out of this mm-hmm. world. And and um that's the core of why we, we do anime. And also a lot of anime is based on Shinto beliefs. Mm-hmm. When we did our research, anime is based on Shinto beliefs, and Shinto beliefs is animals talking and being gods yeah where is there a place where animals talking and being gods is a major oh great african traditional religion animism <laughs> so it was it's a no-brainer so we just like oh animism shinto beliefs okay whatever they they're nine tail fox <laughs> we just can't we just would just be running back and forth if mm-hmm. they, you have ninjas then we have mongoose these african um magical juju uh, um, practitioners we just kept going back and forth down the hall of creation, whatever we saw in anime, we just look for the equivalent on the continent. And that's really what we've been doing. And and it's been major, a big inspiration. Dragon Ball, of course, major inspiration. A lot of these anime has kind of shown us, I think has shown creators how they can think about content. Yeah. 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 It's, you, when you mentioned Dragon Ball, a lot of people that don't really know, like, if you think, uh, what was it? Journey into the West is, yep. that, is that story. And it was like it's every bit of Dragon Ball Z embellished, of course. You know, so oh, way, embellished. <laughs> way embellished, <laughs> right? Embellished. You know, way <laughs> embellished. So you know, and you're right. When you see when you look at anime, it does involve a lot of their culture. And mm-hmm. in some form or fashion, it involves their culture. And it's it's something that we need for our very own, you know, to tell our stories mm-hmm. and to tell our culture. So because it's it's there, it's Literally, they're waiting to be told. You know, yeah. <laughs> and, have you and, seen Roroni Kenshin? Y'all yeah, watch yes, that? yes, yeah. amazing yeah. historical fiction. Yeah. You wanted to go to the Meiji era, like it was like a study <laughs> in the <laughs> Meiji era. It was amazing. And if you watch anime, what it makes you want to do? It makes you want to go to Japan. Mm-hmm. So that's what we. I, I mean, I, I'm not. I don't know what other creators want to do, but what I I know what we want to do is that we hope that by reading your reading our content or watching our content, you want to go to that country. Mm-hmm. That's my only problem with, with um, Black Panther. There is no yeah. Wakanda. It doesn't exist. I didn't know why you can't just say Tanzania. Why can't yeah. you just say the name of the damn place? <laughs> based on? Like, just say it. It's there. It's, it's there. there. It's, there's a there's a you know what, I, right I, there. I think it's the I think it's the you know it's it's advertising problems because that's what it is. Because Wakanda Wakanda makes you feel happy, makes you feel proud. Tanzania. I got nothing. It's, it's that's, no, what it's that's, what, that's what that's what. That's what it's is a great I mean, it's just like it's just like Sierra Leone. People, people here, Sierra Leone, um, and I have friends and family that are from there. Beautiful country, but talk to anybody outside of it that doesn't really have a worldview, they're gonna immediately go to Kanye West song and immediately think blood diamonds. Think about the blood <laughs> diamond trade and how that yeah. happened. And I'm just like, that's not how that country is at all. 
it's actually Ooh. very advanced. So, yeah. so but it's like, but if you get yeah. those folks that just, like I said, it just goes back to, it goes back to number one education, number one being informed. Yeah. So if you're not educated or you're not informed, then you're going to go off of, like you said, it's, it's what's put out there. Like, mm-hmm. um, let's be honest, if we're really going to think of anything that we can relate to from a cartoonish standpoint, the, the earliest things would probably be like, uh, this is probably showing my age. Um, you remember Fat Albert and the Cosby Kids? Yeah. And that that was the only, that was possibly, and I and I can say arguably, because I'm, I'm pretty sure I'm missing one or two cartoons. That's probably the closest we've ever gotten to of having something we can relate to that had zero substance. Sure. Entertaining as hell? Yes. Funny? Yes. Do you remember anything from it? No. Not a goddamn thing. <laughs> so. But you know what, though? Mm-hmm. I'll take a fat Albert, uh, fat Albert universe, like seeing them, like take it, <laughs> take it like Dragon Ball Super and expand it. That's mm-hmm. all I'm saying. I just, the reason we have this mm-hmm. multiverse and we call the world's largest black comic universe is because I looked at Milestones mm-hmm. and I was like, the work wasn't complete. Yeah. We had great stuff, but it wasn't complete. And then you keep looking around for these, for folks, what they have done in the, in the past. And no one has quite got the model. And then all of a sudden you have uh, Marvel Universe starts exploding. Attack on Titan starts exploding. You have um, Dragon Ball Super out of nowhere exploding. You have all these stories where there's this um, intelligent technical creation that's happening that makes mm-hmm. you go deep and immerse yourself in it and i and and me if, if fat albert went to mars i i, I would watch it i was like <laughs> how did we get but, here but how I did think... we how did we get this is the guy with the with the beanie like how yeah. did he find something <laughs> like no yeah no but that's the but that's the thing though it's like at the time of that coming out it was more entertaining than actually grabbing so right. Let's be honest, as animation moved forward in Dragon Ball Z, it, Dragon Ball Dragon Ball Z had their viral moments. Attack on Titan, almost every episode was a viral moment, especially when it first came out and its yeah. graphic nature and it grabbed people and literally grabbed people. So when you, every one of those things, it always had to have a moment that makes it stand out. And, I, and I'm glad that you mentioned Milestone because Milestone to me was always one of those, it could have actually been what milestone could have been what harlem nights was for us in movies it could have been for comics just because you you know a blood syndicate of 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 icon of hardware of static and the, of, of, of excuse me of icon and rocket just those four alone you could literally build the milestone universe around and tell multiple stories but it's always like you said i always say it's this it's this I like to call it the, the glass ceiling because because you know, mm-hmm. if you ever have such a because it's amazing if you had twenty years ago said what MCU did now mm-hmm. uh, let, let's let's build a cinematic universe it's unheard of let me take a bunch of movies telling one story unheard of mm-hmm. you tell this to the money people um, how much do you need from us and what do you think we gonna get back and you hope this works. 20 years ago, people would have called you nuts. Mm-hmm. Now, Brinks trucks back up. Could we say the same thing about my... Because everybody, when MCU came out, DC mm-hmm. tried. Yeah. But <laughs> when Milestone came out, Milestone, when they when the documentary came out, everybody kept hoping. It's like, is this, is this finally going to be the hurdle that gets them over? Are we going to finally get to see some of these heroes and villains finally transcend over to the movie side and there was a little bit of buzz then there was nothing yeah it was almost like it's almost like all you can remember was i'll never forget i was like someone said casting for icon yeah we are we are doing castings for icon and hardware that lasted two weeks yep and it's almost like what happened and it's and it's hard and the best way to say it is this not a lot of people know who Icon is. Yeah. Sure. I mean, we have plenty of friends out there. Hellspawn cosplayed a name one mm-hmm. who cosplays as him. Plenty. They're not to me who know what hard who hardware is. Hardware was literally better than Tony Stark, but how many people know who hardware is outside of this room right now? Right. Or even Icon, which again, 
Don't know anybody, but everybody knows static. Why do we know static? WB. Because static shock. Because yeah, I love static shock. You know, the long that was a long running cartoon, Saturday morning cartoon yeah. that did very well across all democratic, all democratic, all statistics. Sorry, yeah. words to leave me right now. That baby all brain. Demo- demographic, demographic, I got you. But, <laughs> and child, child brain is real. Child brain is so real. But the point I'm getting to is just that it's amazing how some things get so much, uh, it gets so much as far as buzz going. And then when you finally have something that comes up and it's just like, could this finally turn the corner to where it does open the door? Just like Black Sands opened the door to get multi, to get to multi, I know, to get to multi in deal, to get, yeah. to get those big names, because that's what it was. To see, to see a guy like Kevin Hart go, no, this is great. This is exactly what I want my kids to see, to get that type of level of funding, or to finally have a, or to finally have a, um, or to finally have a movie company go, you know, it'd be great, a static movie. Yeah. I would, they, you know, and again, I and I hope in the James Gunn DC studio, DC Studios universe, I hope that trigger gets pulled. Yeah, because they have the rights. I hope that trigger gets pulled. I hope that James Gunn does a big f you to whoever says no to this and yeah. decides to produce it. I hope he does because it opens the door for for companies such as for, for companies production such as yourselves to sit there and say we can do it too. We just we just want to be able to we just want the we just want the opportunity because that's really what it is. It's this proverbial wall that some people are sitting there saying because they they said about Wakanda Forever that that people of color cannot make successful movies. Wow, and that, and, I, and that still yeah. sticks with that yeah. still sticks with me that they sat there it it wasn't they never said who it was. But the actors in that movie sat there and all said the same thing. They were told by folks in, in influential areas thought that that movie would not do well because of its diversified cast. And they turned around and did a big FU in the box sales to that movie. But unfortunately, it's that same type of thinking that prevents a lot of other uh, creations, comics, animes, shows from being done Simply put, because as much as we are used, depicted, imitated, all the above, us being at the forefront of it still isn't a money maker to those that ultimately could open the doors. That's and I'll say, and I'll, I'll say my, uh, yeah, go I'll ahead, say go my ahead. on that. I, again, I think it goes back to Ubuntu. I remember there was someone that was saying something that there's a in the Jewish community they have a similar word, but it means we will only if you if you selling it we will buy it and he said and the person was saying that that is in the ubuntu community basically if you're selling or doing some other some type of content mm-hmm. we will buy it mm-hmm. regardless of the what what the condition or the service mm-hmm. <laughs> you know like a, almost a Jamaican yeah. Caribbean restaurant, that service, oh boy! Like, yeah. Regardless of that, you go know, sit and get that oxtail. You're gonna go. You're gonna bite the bullet and pay. I'm gonna get my black car revoked. I've never had oxtail, but go ahead, <sighs> Kira. Don't do it. Don't do it, Lady Mandalore. I, 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 look, I will be honest. I've never had it, so I'm gonna go ahead and say it. Say it until I actually have it's, some. It's I've fine. never had oxtail, so I, she, she, she said, "How I, dare you?" <laughs> <laughs> and you live closer to the south than I do, and you've never had. Yes, I've never had oxtail. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, sir. Oh, we we got to no, get no, you no. together. I think that no. I think that's important. I think I. So basically, what we do as a people, as a community, is that um, if we get bad service or the thing is bad. We purchase the comic. It there's some off. We will go on social media, be like, "Yo, look at this thing. It's well, not da 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 da. Totally tarnish it. That's not right. Ubuntu. And I think if you have Ubuntu, you know, it 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 it'll be a no brainer to people who who thinking only in money, because it's like, oh, this million billion dollar demographic loves this stuff and will continuously buy in that stuff. It's the same reason why there's Chinatowns and not Africa towns or whatever, 
or Chocolate I City. Mean, only Chocolate City. Very ever strong on. point. You got a point because it's it's a very it. strong I mean, point. Look at look at the first Black Panther. How many? It's it's funny that you say that because the more I think about that, when Black Panther first came out, how many syndicated, uh, really syndicated black radio stations, television, movie shows? I'm sorry, television shows, radio, satellite radio. They were all saying the same thing. We must support Black Panther. I mean, even your syndicated radio shows, uh, like The Breakfast Club, you even had mm-hmm. Charlamagne and God say, oh, we need to support this. This is the first time that we'll be able to see a Black hero on, on, mm-hmm. on Cinematic. And I'm like, wait a second. First off, you're wrong because it was not the first yeah. Black hero. <laughs> we had, we, all, we, had, we always have Meteor Man. Yeah, I, Meteor I, Man I, was the first. Yeah. <laughs> let's, let's get that right. Meteor Man was always the first, but it's amazing the level of free advertisement that Disney never had to pay for. Oh, yeah, because, because it became we, mandatory. Yeah, because mm-hmm. that, that that's what I'm saying. The whole village mentality was we had to show this positive image, even though it really isn't produced. I said I, I, that was the one thing that kind it of was, it was it was a two it's a two sided coin. Yeah, it's we a two sided coin. It, like we, we got what it was doing, but at the mm-hmm. same time, yeah. And don't get me wrong, I'm a huge Black Panther fan. Always mm-hmm. have been. Yeah. Uh prior to the movie, I, I've I've been in the trenches, you know. <laughs> so I, I I came up in the priest era, and you know Christopher Priest runs, you know. So I I've been there, and knowing knowing that type of you know content that is out here, like you know we need that same energy that we need to support, we need to support, we need to support, mm-hmm. we need that same energy across the board mm-hmm. of of saying, hey, check out Colin Up Production. Check out Wingless Comics. Yeah, check I out, mean, you know, check out, you know, check out, check out. Uh, or uh, yeah, comics, yeah, yeah. yeah, right. You know, or Concrete, you know, and check these people out because it's there. The content is there. We need to support it. Hence, hence why I have to show. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> that, and, that's, and that's the reason why I, I agree with you on that. It's just that when you think about it, yes, yeah, the village mentality. It's like, you know, if the, if the, we all know the movie guy. Before before internet took us over and gave us streaming, we all knew the movie who the movie CD guy was in your in your uh, area. Mm-hmm. Did we not support him when we didn't want to feel like paying twenty dollars to go to a movie theater, but we yep. gladly paid ten dollars for a CD and hope to God it was clear. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> or that it was the one you paid for. Or that was yeah. I mean, we supported we supported the movie yep. dude. The same way we same way we supported Mrs. Fletcher when she sold freeze cups and candies for twenty five cents. <laughs> that woman say the that woman say the neighborhood and nobody knew. But the point I but the point I'm making is, like you said, it, it's honestly about support. That you know, like again, with coal and up productions such as yourselves and others that we name, it shouldn't be criticism. If anything, let criticism come later when you're established. Now, as long as you ain't. As long as you ain't cussing nobody out. If you ain't cussing nobody out and just basically be an ass, okay, cool. But let everybody give let everybody give you a fair shot. It's like, it's like if I never like if I never tried oxtail, which I just admitted th- about 10 seconds ago. And let's just say somebody in Tennessee, Lady Mandalore is trying her hardest. I know. I'm using this as an example because because she ready. It's like, fine. There's a, there's no, a spot. There's fine. a spot across the street from me right now. I get it. You're ready I, to cuss me I, out. I I'm to no, I'm I'm sad for you. Is what I am. <laughs> <laughs> I'm but sad the, for you. But the point I'm making, like, use me for an example. Never had oxtail. Let's just say in my home state of Tennessee. For those that are watching, I turn around and get like 20 places. Will, you never had oxtail? Here, go here, go here, go here, go here. Let's just say I get five places to go try oxtail. Do I try all five places? Yes, because I want to know who's got the best oxtail. Mm -hmm. Am I going to down who has the worst oxtail? No. But at the same time, I'm still, if someone asks for where the best oxtail in Tennessee is, I'll give them five locations. I'm giving those five locations five equal chances because what may have not been a good experience for me may actually be a great experience for somebody else. So, so you're still so, so you're still supporting. Yeah. Our but job, did, our job, Lady thing. Mandalore, is to yeah. make sure we get a <laughs> serving of oxtails, rice and peas, and cabbage. Wait, are you coming to, to Blur? You're not coming to BlurredCon, correct? I can't go nowhere at least for about good nine months. We'll we'll figure this out. I'll ship something we'll, down we'll, to you. Yeah. We'll <laughs> we'll get it. I was gonna say we'll, I, we'll, I, I won't. 
until until Obi can at least <laughs> at least he's only at least he's one. I'm gonna be at, I'm gonna be at home uh, living vicariously through y'all. Look, look, oh, no, no, no. look, we, look, lady that Mandalore. plate's going to get to. I don't think you understand. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that plate is going. This to is get no to bucket you. of spaghetti. I tell you this much. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, so I do, I, I do, I do want to say I feel like mm. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna challenge. I'm just gonna challenge one thing. I swear to God, just one thing. I'm not. Go even, ahead. I promise. Um, She's my weapons master, by the way. <laughs> so, <laughs> um, I, 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 I'm challenging your statement that um, the the black community does negatively uh, critique. Um, at least in this realm, um, the, the comic book industry or so, something that is being forth in, put forth in the Black community. I think that is more reserved, like you said, for service, not necessarily for comic books, because I feel like that is something that's very niche and not talked about at all um, within our community. I don't, I think the issue is that we don't talk at all about our, our um, Black uh, comic book creators. I've been having t uh, conversations for weeks now um, within my little tribe of people about where can I go to find comics? Who can I look at? Has anybody read these stories? Nobody can tell me anything. I know more than the people I'm asking. So I think, I think the issue is to actually start getting um, a listing going, mm. or at least a conversation going amongst all of us saying, okay, like, Will said, "Go to this place. Try this one. Oh, if you if you're into this type of um, anime, you're gonna probably like this one. The drawing on this one is really is super is super clean. It's nice. Mm. Um, that might draw you more into the story. I I don't think those conversations are happening. I don't think anybody's bad mouthing anybody overtly. The, it, I just, just think we're not they... having a conversation at all. Yeah, mm. not, so it's information not, it's not... gap. Yes, yeah, yes. Yeah. That's the best way to put it. That's the best way to put yeah. it." Is there is this information gap because you you don't know. This is why I create this platform. I, I think I've said it in every show. I created this platform just for partially this reason is to put that shine, put that that spotlight on these POC creatives who have this content, who mm -hmm. say, "Hey, everybody gets a fair one." You know, when they come here, you know, you you got something. I want to talk to you about it. I want to see mm -hmm. what you got. You know. You know, whether you're a, a comic book artist and writer mm -hmm. to a novelist, mm -hmm. I want to know about it. You know, we've been we've been pushing <laughs> so many books. Mm -hmm. It's ridiculous. You know? <laughs> I was like, I'm like, I'm, I'm starting to I'm, my indie stuff is starting to. Uh, oh, wow. Balance. Yeah. <laughs> I'm waiting. I'm waiting on, on mine. Just on I'm, site. I'm, I got yeah, you. I, I'm waiting on mine. I ordered mine. I'm waiting on mine. So. <laughs> You know, so we have people like you, like yourself, and and other people. I'm working on something with Wingless Comics, so they can come mm. on. We get, I, I shouted out Malachi Bailey, who's over there mm. with her, and you know, uh, Aaron Brown with her with her novels, and you know, Cerise Murphy, you know, uh, uh, Brashia Anglin here in Cleveland. Mm -hmm. These are they're dope projects, and they're dope content that mm -hmm. we don't get these stories. You know, don't get us wrong. We reread our Marvel and our DC and our images and stuff like that. But in Lord the same Lord, breath, Lord open. <laughs> yeah, you know, that's, that's that yeah. part right there. Yeah, you know, we love I, we I'm love just... it because. But we at the same time, when you're getting when you're getting Guardians of Dahomey, you know, when you're oh, getting yeah. Cola Nut Productions, and when you're getting all these other, uh, when you're getting her, and you're getting Jason Michael Primrose and his writing, you know, mm -hmm. we want more of that. Because it it draw you know there's a reason why we celebrated milestone because it was like we were seeing us mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know and like you said there was it was one thing missing it was something missing you know you're bringing that to the table you know it's like possibly this this is the button right here you know and this is how we can talk about it and this is how we can and let's kind of walk away from not just storytelling but let's walk into culture telling because one once again. You're you're seeing a need mm -hmm. of of telling our culture. You're seeing a need of saying that's all good and all, but let's talk about this person mm -hmm. who's real mm -hmm. and comes from a real background. And you know, because 
once again, if they can do it with Thor and Hercules, why can't we do it with our own? And I, 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 I'll say this. I, I, I agree with you, Lady Man. Go ahead. No, you're Sorry. good. Go ahead. Did someone say something? Okay. I, I hear what you're saying, Lady, uh, Lady Mandalore, the information gap. And I equally challenge. I, I like to think in, in Vegeta sometime. Like, he, he, he's like my head. <laughs> the pride of a Saiyan. He's like, it's, it's ridiculous how all about Saiyans he is. Mm-hmm. And I have not met that type of energy in the community. We, like... There's no one that I, I don't think I've met one blurred who was like, I'm exclusive, exclusive this type of content, like the books you mm-hmm. ha- held up. Like, I don't read none of that. I don't want no Marvel. I don't want no DC. I see what y'all are doing. I'm not with it. Disney, you messed up. Studio Ghibli messed up. All y'all messed up. I'm only reading and consuming this pride of a, a person of African descent. And yes. you sneer at other content. That's not happening. I, it's I, funny. I, I, it's funny you mentioned that because when you said Vegeta, I just think of a guy sitting there, yeah, our eyebrows arched, <laughs> gruff you know, all day long. You know, pride. <laughs> and the reason is, in the beginning, we talked about all the stuff that Marvel and DC is coming out with. Mm-hmm. I waited, and I could see there's my Vegeta in me waiting. <laughs> I want this. this eyebrow. When we could talk about stuff that, about, like, because. I feel le- I feel let let down by them. I feel they've contributed to um, uh, making a lot of our folks of African descent have low self esteem, and I I I've never seen or come across the Vegeta of the Blur community, and and I think that's what's necessary because like then that they could continue to come out with the content. We're, we're folks are still uh, um, consuming other content from indie and all the other creators, but we're still consuming Superman. We're still consuming all these big names and we're the largest consumers of it. We are like, true. we're the largest consumers That's of it. So, true. so why yeah. do we, why we do these things where we do these blackouts? Let's, let's get off TikTok. Let's get off social media. Let you see how it is when we're not there to consume. We've never done that for multimedia content we never been like all right dc you're done for the next nine months <clears throat> we're not gonna look at you any of your stuff uh, 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 black, black spartan is like oh i, I, I I'm, know. I'm knocking I, on that i'm gonna tell you why i'm gonna tell you why because number one it is a beautiful concept here's where your crux is gonna be because you're telling the same group, you're telling the same group of individuals, which would all agree with you. But at the same time, we all have multiple different fandoms. Like, would I would I be would I love to see um <clears throat> would I love to see more uh black content? Would I love to see because today, because I'm not gonna lie to you, I want to see a Shango comic. Mm-hmm. I want to see one. But I want to see it done well. Mm-hmm. And I want to see it done well to the point to where I can sit there and be like, you thought you thought that diet was bad? Let me show you what this one does. Mm-hmm. I would love to see that. But at the same time, with indie and other creators such as yourselves, it's not a lot of real estate in the world of advertising. Because unfortunately, Marvel's a big machine. DC is a big machine. IDC, not as big as Marvel, not as big as Marvel or DC, but still a big machine itself, just because of a few titles that if they said such titles dropped, instant firestorm. The problem has always been getting things out there. You can write the stories all day, but if you turn around and said, Hey, we want um we want Marvel or DC to understand that we control basically what you put out. You can put all the content out in the world. You can put all the content out there in the world that you want, but without our dollars, you really ain't shit. I mean, it shows in sales. Yeah. It shows in sales. You you, get, you come out with a project mm-hmm. of a character and you would think it would do well, but then 
they, it shuts down after what four or five issues, you know, yeah. and like, I because be, like, it's underselling, you know. Like I'll give you one example: the Spider-Man ran by Zeb Wells was supposed to be given a was supposed to be given a fifteen issue run, didn't make it past five. Yeah, because it was there's a because <laughs> it, was, it, was. it was it was it was it was, ew. but again, something was supposed to be given in twelve issues, which is normally a longer comic book run. It made it past issue five. They pulled it. Um, Again, that's not the only time Batman's had issues pulled, Superman's had issues pulled. Wonder Woman, um, all of them. Pretty have. much, pretty much every comic yeah, book character. Everybody takes has sales. Had pulled. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But it goes back to sales. Now, I would challenge that because I would say this: instead of saying a blackout, because yes, a blackout would be effective, but what would be more effective is that what if what if indie creators had the same advertising backing as a Jay-Z Rockefeller advertising platform. Because that right there is the key. Because they can reach people, not just our people. Because because uh, granted, within our own circles of blurs and nerds, we can reach multiple people, true. But an advertising group with that type of financial backing and connections that can go across uh, ads on games, on apps, on television, Pretty much anywhere that has that receives a signal. Imagine that type of advertising coverage, and you're doing your comic and saying and showing something. Like I, I hate to say this because we just got to talk about it. When Black Sands showed their first eh, 45 seconds of anime content, and it looked like Dragon Ball Z, sounded like Dragon Ball Z, but it was actually black, and everybody's like, "Holy crap! What is it? What is this?" The moment you get someone's eyes on it and go, holy crap, what is this? All those advertising dollars just paid themselves. Now you're sending traffic to wherever your stuff is, and that's what gets the buzz going. So I would challenge that in saying it's just the fact of, of a targeted, a strategy on targeting not only consumers, but just how many people can you reach and what's the most effective way to do that? Because that right there is the key to where people will know your comics. And then and that's the same time where 10 years later, people will sit there and go, oh, well, if he, oh, well, if, if Koala Nut Productions just put out another comic and did very little advertising, but yet everybody knows about it. That's the difference between actually being established versus you're trying to get buzz. But in order to get buzz, you do have to have some sort of machine behind you. Unfortunately, Marvel and DC have that. Well, I, I agree with you, but I cannot I'll challenge it because there was I remember when Luke Cage came out on was it Netflix? Yeah and the yeah. server went down. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, 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 yeah. I will never forget that. I was mm -hmm. like, I can't see it. I was like, oh everyone's like the server is down. Mm -hmm. So many people of African descent flooded that streaming platform. Mm -hmm. Their server mm -hmm. went down. Yeah. They, and, and it was and like I, what's mm -hmm. up? No, I was gonna say no, 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 you're, no. you're right, you're right. You're it right. was it was it was crazy. It was a moment of like wow. That's what we. That's what. That's our possibility. That's what we can do. And it wasn't. I mean, there's some advertising, but it was literally, the, the community, mm -hmm. has, structures and machinery and technology in play to get information out so quickly and in so and, 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 and at such a high rate that it it's beyond algorithm. Algorithms can't capture it, and it's like, no one milestone and different people. Don't know how to turn it on. Sometimes it just turns itself on all mm -hmm. of a sudden. Like when I have a, my mom's from the village. Mm -hmm. My mom's from the village, zero education, older. When she's talking to me about Black Panther and like when I need to go get tickets, mm -hmm. when she's completely, from a, even a language perspective, she speaks Igbo to me. Mm -hmm. It's talking about Black, getting, watching Black, Black Panther as if it was a, a thing that she must do. That's when I was like, oh, okay. That's the power of 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 a saying. <laughs> That's the power of the community. It yeah. has one. It can spread news very quickly. Two. It can also be the thing that's that does sign off. And all I'm saying is that look, let's look at mixtapes. Remember the um, datpiff.com? Yeah. There's a place for indie, not indie, <laughs> but like anybody oh, who right. can just spit on beats. There's no dat piff for indie comic creators. Ooh. That's true. I mean, you got it right. I mean, when you look at mixtapes, I mean, you had mixtapes, SoundCloud, mm -hmm. DJ Dogs. I I get it. You, Chris, Chris you don't have the time. 
you don't have the time. <laughs> don't I mean, don't be wrong. Time. I get that. You know, but it, that's what I'm saying. It's like it's another leg. I need to add another team member. <laughs> that's, the, that's the thing about it. It's just that I always like I can't take credit for this. A friend of mine uh, said this. He always said that he, he said that there needs to be a there needs to be a black flea market for comics. It does. Because at a flea market, you could find anything and everything. And at the same time, Lady I know Kira. Go ahead, Kira. Go she ahead, Kira. I know you about to say it. No, wait. I can't say anything. I have my back to the thing, and I can't. I didn't hear you. I wasn't listening. Please, please, <laughs> please continue. So, uh, while, while she while she's looking at that. it, and show okay. that. Yeah, yeah. I didn't make it a B sat. <laughs> That's <laughs> one time a year. That was last week. Yeah, yeah, one time there's, a there's year. There's one thing. One thing. But I there's, say, but they're across the country. They are across yeah, the country. They're yeah, they're starting more. to. They're yeah. starting they're to be starting a to lot of. Yeah, they're starting a lot. There's a lot of, uh, black owned comic, comic book conventions, yeah. geared. Yeah. Towards us, you know, yeah. it sells. It might sell all the stuff, but you know, you have the you have the writers, you have the artists, you have content of various type from us, that's starting to pop up at these conventions because, once again. When you have when you have this type of book, when you have this type of content to put out, it's really hard, especially especially for brick and mortar stores, yeah. mm -hmm. to find. Say, if somebody said, "I want to get Guardians of the Holy," or "I want to get one of these books from Colin Up Productions," mm -hmm. where can wow. I get it? Right. You know, I, you know, I I might physically want to put my hands on this book like today, yeah, and and they may not carry it. You know, not not. Not everybody has the ability. You really have to hunt high and low for like Rodney Barnes, Blackula, yeah. or or Philadelphia. You know, for the for these kind for these books to say who has this? I want that or the book Black. You know, I want. You know, I need that. I want it. Where is it at? Where can I find it? Where can I get all this stuff? So, I think it makes it. You know, there's there's several hurdles. There's several mm -hmm. hurdles, and. Because we're not lacking in content, that's for sure. That's the one. That's the one thing that I that I think we can all agree with. There's plenty. There is plenty for us to go into to honestly tell for a very, very, very long time. Mm -hmm. It's just it always comes down to it comes down to uh, execution. Yeah, how you execute it, and. Ultimately, I, I hate to say it because it always comes back to it, money. Right. It always it, it's it's money has always been money has money funding has always been the divine factor in how far or how uh, well I'm sorry not how far how quickly you can get to your end goal because if you do have enough if you do have enough to get yourself there or to get the idea of where you, of where you're trying to get to there cool. But if you're trying to go like this, like again, also let me also say this, there's nothing wrong with with Kickstarters, GoFundMe's, because again, that's not that's just another way to connect to your target audience. Because right. if you can get them, they share it again, brings more to you. So more power to you on that. Congratulations but, yeah. to Midnight Comics for meeting mm -hmm. their yeah, yeah, like, I mean, they, they met their they met their goal. Yeah. They didn't even make it to the show yet for next week. And they were like they met yeah. their goal already. I'm like, you still coming on. So I, right. I, I was and I was gonna say they, they didn't even need 50 people to meet that ten thousand dollar goal. Mm -mm. It was I think it was 38. Yeah, yeah. and it's, oh, it's like because people believe in the content, they believe in the product, yeah. and, and this is yeah. something that we 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 really are thirsty for. Like mm -hmm. we're thirsty for like calling up productions. We're thirsty mm -hmm. for wingless. We're thirsty for Malachi Bailey and her. We're thirsty. Oh, wow. Like we we because we do we want our stories out there now. We you know it's, it's a global it's, thing. It is. Have y'all been to Lagos Comic Con? No. Oh no. Exactly. <laughs> wait, 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 hold on. That's I, I can't. I'm not allowed to go. <laughs> <laughs> wait. All right, why? I'm not allowed to. Oh, are you? <laughs> <laughs> are you Nigerian or what's going on? That's a look away. Eighty percent. Okay. <laughs> I'm not allowed to go. I won't. I won't make it back. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Lagos is going through some things too. But uh, no, the reason I mentioned Lagos Comic Con is that I, I don't think, I don't. <sighs> But yeah. the Vegeta in me is like you don't know how big the community, the blurred community is. No, Nigerians, 
No, oh, all they are. Huge. Yeah, it's and, the the. I think the content in the blur community, and this and this stretches across just the medium itself, yeah. not just comics, but in in media like television and music, like mm-hmm. even on Netflix. My yeah. wife watches a ton, a ton of Africans based shows and, water. and movies. Hollywood. And, yeah, oh God, mm-hmm. yes, mm-hmm. You, you know, and that's what I. So I'm like. Treat. I, you know, I would walk through the room and I'm like, what are you watching? You know, like, because I like the Nazinga joint. Mm. I'm like, I know I read about her years ago. I'm like, yo, you when when was this on? You weren't going to tell me, you know? And so <laughs> it was one of those things, you know, I'm like, you know, and she soaked it up. And, and my little one, she soaked it up, you know? Mm-hmm. So it was just like, I need that. I need that. So, uh, Obi Tuku. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Where can they get? Where can they find you? Where can they find? Yeah, Productions? is it possible you could share screen and go to Webtoon and type in Colonial Productions? So yeah, we why we use that? Yeah, yeah, let's if, do that. Since we're talking about an information gap, let's. Yeah, let's I, I, kinda, I, I, I stay on Webtoon, so I kind of already have it pulled over my side. But go All ahead. right, perfect. No, <laughs> so why, why, why are you talking? I'll go ahead and pull that up. Let's to close the information gap. We we thought long and hard, and. Um, Allowing our using the platforms of people who are not of African descent, mm-hmm. like Webtoons, was the method we decided to move forward. We were on Black Sand app. It was great to be in. I call it the. It was like the what's that? Not MTV. It was like um. What is that? MT. What's that? Black channel that used to be on back in the day. BET. The it was like the BET of comics. <laughs> that's what. It, that's oh, what I called it. Oh, uh. I called Black Sand at the BET of comics. It was like a bunch of creators of African descent. Yeah, all putting up I content. Kinda... I was doing that for a while, but it, it wasn't getting enough. There's some there's some technological components that I can mm-hmm. tell. I work in technology, and I was like, oof. If if they 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 started with a mobile app, which is great, but they didn't make it into a web app. If you make it a mm-hmm. web app, you're searchable on Google. There's all these technical things. I was like, ah, it's lacking. But I I did it. It was great to be in that community and hear the conversations mm-hmm. going on there. But ultimately. Can you click all res- or more all results? No more. Can you click more in the bo- bottom right hand corner? Oh, more. Okay. More. Yeah. There we go. More. More. There you go. Yeah. There you go. So we ultimately went back to Webtoons because Webtoons is a web app, mm-hmm. and for from an information gap, a web app means it's an application that's on the web with the URL, and it, because it's on the web, it's searchable. So if you type in, if you have a story called Queen and Zinga the Great, like. All Queen and Zinga will come up, but then a webtoon, if your SEO is good, will come up. And that makes you more searchable. So it closes the information gap. That's why I went back to webtoon. If you're just a mobile app, you can't search a mobile app on Google. Right. So we went back to webtoon and we're like, we're putting our entire universe. We're gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna shock webtoon <laughs> by having the most content, put our all universe. And so this is Red Hunter. And Red Hunter, you can go to, go back to the go to the first episode. I really this is our latest one. Um, Red Hunter, when we when we were getting Red Hunter ready, I'm like, okay, we're going back to Webtoon so that anyone around the world can read this comic. Mm-hmm. So Red Hunter was in our new comics, and we start off again with a very African style storytelling. We don't go once upon a time; we go story, story, story. That's how we that's how we start a story. And so we do that here. And then if you read this in a Samurai Jack long ago in old <laughs> Africa, in the 15th century, I, Tohazi, chief of the Gomba, you know that Samurai Jack, yeah, yeah, yeah. Aku sound. That's <laughs> literally what's happening here. The greatest hunter of all waked, um, waged out to wage war to root out evil. And so we're telling this kind of story in this like uh, Ethiopian scroll. And it says, it starts with him here, where he's talking about one day I died in battle, like I always do. Kind of like the Samurai Jack, where he's fighting and then he's doing his usual thing and then something changes. So this in is, this story, this yeah, like this. yeah, yeah, Tohazi, the thing about Tohazi, he's all about water. And so that's where he gets his immortality. But the thing about the Dagomba people, they're big on drums. So yeah. through the drums, um, their descendant calls upon Tohazi through the drums and he, he hears it. And this Dexter's Laboratory kind of came through that because you don't remember that Dexter's Laboratory <laughs> movie. <when it> came. <laughs> yeah, so then he here he emerged out the ground, it, you know, kind of like uh, mm. um, um, 
Samurai Jack. And then right here, a little bit with Wakanda for Dogombo Forever. I was like, let's say actual, an actual culture and say for Dogombo Forever. So this is a story where we're, we pushed out there as our best content, but also as part of the one of our universe. And at the mm -hmm. bottom, we start to talk about other stories. So if you go back to the um, webtoon, um, the uh, yeah, I click to the okay, click Colonel Productions. Mm -hmm. Actually, let's click the webtoon. Let, let, let me let me walk you through. Click the webtoon logo. I want to walk people through this. Click the actual webtoon logo in the top left hand corner. Yeah, that one. Yeah. Now, what do you see? No people of African descent. <laughs> right. <laughs> this is a typical <laughs> webtoon experience. Sometimes mm -hmm. you might see some dope stuff by Ordeal, that Caribbean Trinidadian author. She's blowing up. Kudos to Ordeal. But this is what you see. Right. All the way through. Now, yeah, what we want to guide you is <laughs> information. Yeah, you see it. And maybe you see some spots of color. But if you go to the top right hand corner at the top, and our way we guide is that if you click the search bar, yeah. Type in colonut. Enter our search. Here we go. You immediately will come here. And in our canvas, mm -hmm. we have 27 titles. We put 27 titles online. All these stories are from colonut. Yeah. And they span genre, romance, horror, comedy, sci-fi. Red Hunter is more of a, a kind of like a fantasy action. We have six love languages, which is a, a pandemic romance. Uh, we have uh, um, the girl with no face. If you go to number two, click the second one, the little number two. Number two. Yeah, on the bottom. Oh, bottom. The second um, result. Oh. Yeah, go there on the bottom. Number two. Yeah, number two. You see more content. Kisi Electron Girl is our best title. We have chapter two on there. We have Rumble in the Jungle about African martial arts because mm -hmm. we talked about Rumble in the Jungle is when Muhammad Ali fought in the DRC. Against Joe Fraser. I mean, was it Joe Fraser or George yeah. Foreman? No, he was, he was right. right. Joe Fraser. Joe Fraser. Really, really big thing. So we built uh, upon that. There's seven galaxies of Somali space pirates. So we take all, we, again, we take all this and we put it on here. And so this is where if you go to Webtoon, type in Colonna, you'll see all these stories. Any stories that come out to you, like in this picture, if anything sticks out to you, click it. This, this is that, for example, between the two pages, what, what clicks out to you? Great Just, one. Mm -hmm. Click that one. 16 Strikes. 16 Strikes is about all the African warlords. Charles Taylor, Idi Amin, Gaddafi. So we, it's, it's a crazy story of a pacifist that has the power of a warlord in the shape of a Shinigami. Just this like that art note. is very, very clean. Yeah. Thank you. It's not all over the place. It's not throwing you off. It's bright because I'm liking these colors. Yep. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So this one is a really interesting story, and and so even with this, when you come here and you and you get into the story and you get into this this world, from here after you read a couple of them, if you and this is Charles Taylor, like we were like, if you can talk, if, if Japanese can talk about their warlords, why can't we? Mm -hmm. Even though it's controversial. Charles Taylor was controversial. This is our most controversial comic, but it was like, let us own our controversy and talk about our stories. So okay. this is Charles Taylor who has, who's a Lord of War and our character, and he's talk, He's in the spirit world, and he's talking about this power um, that they have. Um, so Charles Taylor, Lord of War. So, so if you click the center, click the center, so you consume this comic and it's like great, and then you subscribe. You go back to the top sixteen right, sixteen strikes NCU, which is the name of our un universe. Just click that. Mm -hmm. After you subscribe to it or whatever, you click Kona Productions. After you subscribe, mm -hmm. but if yeah, you click Kona Productions. Once you click Kona Productions, here's our page. Actually, yeah, so you have to make you log in. Yeah. yeah so go to that. yeah, go to Kona Productions. By after selecting our title, you go to Colonna Productions, and on the left-hand side, or usually in the middle, you'll see all our stories. And you can select mm -hmm. what you want. You can see the conversations we've been having. All our links to all our platforms are there. We want people to come here and follow us. From here, you can see that we're building a black African multiverse within a Korean web platform. Mm -hmm. And this is where you, this is the information, this is me closing the information gap. If you want to know anything and everything about Colonna, you go to Webtoons, you, you, um, you search Colonna, 
you log in, you sign up, use Google or Apple to sign in, you get in there, you scrub past all the non-black content, find us, <laughs> follow us at the top. You go to the top, you click follow, and then you you go and subscribe to each one of the content you find interesting. And you heart each one that you find interesting. Every subscription and every heart is a vote to us. Okay. There's content in here that hasn't had a comic yet. But if you're if we got a high number of hearts and subscriptions for another piece of content, you're telling us what you want to be produced. And we and we will stop producing what we're doing and focus on that. Does that make sense? We're, we're using makes, a product yeah. man, product management mindset. Right. You know what I'm saying? So if you're like yeah. 60 strikes, this is it. Yes, Red Hunter is great, Obichiku, but this, and then we're getting a high number of likes and subscriptions. We're going to focus on building that out. And that way we're listening to our community. And so this is what I wanted to share with the team. This is, yeah. this is a, you need to go to Webtoons, go check them out, Colon Up Productions, uh, sign up, follow, subscribe, because good Lord, I'm, I'm signing up uh, after the show. Uh, <laughs> I'm signing up for the show because I'm producing, I'm doing all this stuff. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, this is dope. Obi Chuku, dude, this has been a great conversation. Uh, and with, with all dope guests, I always give them, I always give them the. There you go. Mm -hmm. Seening. We talked about it. Mm -hmm. You need to go subscribe, go to Webtoons, go check out Colonel Nut Productions. You can follow him also on uh, IG and get all his great. Uh, and he's still going to point you towards Webtoons. Get that, get that information. <laughs> we're going we gonna to close that gap. We're going to close that gap. Uh, man, but thanks. Thank, thank you, dude. Like, thank you. This, this, is, this is something we need. We need these type of discussions. We need these type, this type of content to come out and so we can support it. You know, because if we don't, who will? Right. right. And even critique it. Like, yeah. uh, we want we want feedback. I want all the smoke. Right. I've cool. already <laughs> seen, like, several panels, and I'm like, look, the, the, the art alone, I'm, I'm there because that's my, that's my bag. And that's just what it is. I like, you know, reading about this type of stuff and, you know, being drawn into the fact that you have not just fantasy, but you have a comedy, you have a romance, you mm -hmm. all of this stuff, you know, it's it's not just one pot. There's a lot of stuff. I got DVDs, man. What do you want? <laughs> <laughs> Those be coming on there. Oh man. But man, <laughs> yeah, man. Thanks for coming. <laughs> Thank you for coming on, man. I uh, really appreciate it. This was dope. Uh Lady Mandalore, we're gonna get you up here in the screen real quick. And there we go. Ooh. All right. So we get our sign off. All right. Um, hi. Um, I'm Lady. I'm Lady Mandalore. Um, you I'm gonna guys get you there. <laughs> oh, it's it's a lot, but I also do a lot, so it's a lot to say. Um, <laughs> my name is Lady Mandalore. You can follow me on Instagram at Roomful of Blurs. You can also find me on TikTok under Child of Mandalore, and with that name, you can follow my podcast, which is also called Child of Mandalore, where I go into the history of the Mandalorians. Um, on Saturdays, Paz is the goat. Paz is the goat. Mm -hmm. Yes. <laughs> oh God. Rated E for everyone. <laughs> oh God, what? Jesus, Mary and Christ. Um. <laughs> mm, side note. Um, I still believe that the um, Mandalorians are supposed to be the African diaspora, but they just can't say it because it, there, there's, any there, it, it gives, um, gives you that feel. Yeah. You that feel. I'm just saying, yeah. I just, I'm just, i going to keep saying it. I've been saying it. And on uh, at 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on an app called Fanbase, I hold a chat room every night where we talk about all things nerdy, whether it's something that happened to you at your job and you came through and you saved the day, or there's something going on in the DCU, whatever it's being called now, universe that you just need to bash because i'm James, here for that James, very it's much the, so. it's the james <laughs> universe at this point it's, it is. <laughs> it's what it is I, oh i have a podcast jesus mary and christ um i have a podcast that Go i do live every sunday every sunday check for, check for now um also at 9 p.m eastern standard time on youtube and live on twitch 
it's fun. I have people come on like that that person there. Yes. Soon to be that person there Hello, too. Hello, or hello. Maybe this person here if he's not a freak. <laughs> <laughs> It's a, it's always a it's always a blast. Uh, uh, yes. This last episode you did with Geek by Heart, our very own. Very well um, done. I look. Thank I you. was in the comment section, and I'm like, I think I messed up. Put them together. <laughs> <laughs> I'm in trouble. <laughs> I'm wait never till, gonna learn. Blurcon, live. man. Wait till Blurcon. Oh yeah, Blurcon. I'm gonna be. Oh, in, <sighs> oh God. The witches three, we shall be. Yeah. <laughs> Lord, you can't be and Laney. Oh my god. I'm, I'm just here for the chaos. <laughs> I can see it now. I can see it now. Black Spartan. Are you okay? I'm I'm fine. However, <laughs> I'm just gonna be looking, just be looking for the distress word. Yeah. <laughs> as long as don't say the distress word, we get it. Oh my god. Oh, Will, tell them where they can find you, my guy. Yes, uh, I am Black Spartan, and yes, I am some. St- I am somehow still awake. Uh, new dad, so working off the sleep, working off the hope. It's uh, hustle time, baby. <laughs> man, you ain't lying. But that being said, guys, you can't find me Black Box Four Four Seven on all socials. I usually do reviews and everything that I watch, that I read, that I play. And even gym stuff, because I do a couple push-ups. I actually have a couple podcasts of my own. I do my political daily news podcast called How the Frack We Got Here every Wednesday and every Saturday on YouTube, Facebook, and Twitch. I also have a video game podcast with my co-host Joe Tonello called Get Bit Podcast every Friday. can also be found on Facebook, YouTube, and Twitch. Um, I am also one of the many heads of the legion of writers for Blurred's Eye View. I do cover the wrestling aspect of it all. Why wrestling? Because wrestling is real. People are fake. Shout out to Mr. Kidney for that one. Um, also, mm-hmm. at the same time, guys, I am rooting for everybody black um, and for specific people of color and season mayo. You know who you are. Um, at the same time, guys, we need to be more supportive, more united. Uh, give congrats to those that, have, that, have, that get that spot, that make that bag, that get it faster than you. It's not the fact that you should be salty about it. Just congratulate it because you want everybody to be happy when your time's coming up. Um, at the same time, I'm rooting for everybody. I will share. I will post. I may not be able to buy sometime because you know, I've got a kid now. i got to be responsible. i got responsibilities. Uh, I don't like responsibilities. I got responsibilities. I got that means I can't have fun anymore. No, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Um, but again, um, we are all just trying to make guys. So I just have one rule about that because I one rule about me is I'm a very social person. I talk to almost everybody. Just have one rule. Don't be a dick, and we'll all be cool. There it is. Everybody, it is the man on the wall, Chris Fury. Back once again, I want to thank our guest, Obi Chuku of Coling Up Productions. Thank my team over here. Oh, you can't see my fingers, but that's okay. Mm-hmm. Uh, <laughs> but, <laughs> but I'm pointing in the right direction. Uh, <laughs> so uh, I want to thank them for thank our guests for coming on. Uh, this has been a dope episode. But then again, we always put out dope episodes because we get dope guests. Mm-hmm. So thank you once again for coming on, talking about Coling Up Productions, pointing us in the way. Go support my man. Go support all that they're doing over at Cola Nut Productions. Go out, check out Webtoons. Go out, Cola Nut underscore Productions on IG. You need to go check them out. Show them some love. Support, support, support. Let's close that information gap so we can get more content out there. So we can get those animes out there. You know, uh, I'm looking at you, Broken Beat Anime. Mm-hmm. Get that stuff out there, my man. Y'all we, next. We, y'all <laughs> next. We, we're gonna get y'all back on here. Uh, yeah. But if you like what you've seen and you like what you heard, well, guess what you can do? Go support us. We can get stars now on Facebook, but you know, that's Facebook, whatever. Uh, I'm doing this because we are more than a podcast. Uh, so, but you can always go to IG, go to Blurred's Eye View, and it will send you there to the link tree in the bio right there. And it'll send you all the place, great places where you can find us, including Facebook. And you can also listen to us on Opulence Radio. Shout out to Amron. For having us on Opulence Radio, you can listen to us all day on I think it's Man Cave Monday and on Thursdays. Nice. Guess what? We're all over the place. Um, Twitch, Blurs Eye View One, show love. Uh, you're watching on YouTube, where we always love you. Let's get those numbers up. We're getting there. We're closing in on 300. Sweet. Let's do more. Y'all got it in you. Uh, <laughs> But hit that subscribe button and notification bell. You can find us and, and do all that great stuff. Uh, shout out to our partners over at Ultimate Wireless. You can check them out down there and get your great techie stuff as well. And 
if you're in the blur blind boxes, go to Taco Noir. TacoNoir.com. You get a discount code by typing in Blurred's Eye View at the end of when you're going to check out, and you get some great stuff. And guess where else you can find us? Always press record on Roku and Amazon Fire. Just go to Amazon. Just go to AlwaysPressRecord.com. And if you have Roku or Amazon Fire, download the app. You can see our gorgeous faces talking to dope people like Obi Chuku and Colin Up Productions and Carl Jones and Hieroglyphic. You know, Tafari told it earlier in the commercial. You know what I'm talking about. Uh, until next Thursday, until this Thursday, next Thursday. Good Lord, I'm, I'm back to work already and already a week ahead of myself. Um, <laughs> Until Thursday, 9 p.m. Eastern, when we're talking to another fantastic Blur guest, talking about more projects that they have coming out. Remember to check us out Tuesdays at 8.30 p.m. Eastern on Facebook, YouTube, and Twitch. Thursdays at 9 p.m. Facebook, YouTube, Twitch, and all those great places where you can listen to us on your podcast. Anywhere you can listen to your podcast and watch us on the television. Uh, I would say it. I'd advise you to watch us while you're at work if you have a boring job. Because that means no one's watching you. So <laughs> until then, achieve that dream. But remember to educate yourself and others, entertain yourself and others, and most of all, encourage yourself and others. I'm Chris Fury, along with the squad and Obi yeah. of Pulling Up Productions. Yeah. Thank you once again. We are out of here.